In at number 5 we have Berlin Citadel. The Citadel was built in 1559 and is known as one of the best preserved military structures in Europe. It was originally built to protect Spandau from attack. Built specifically to have no blind spots giving an advantage on all sides in the event of an attack. The Citadel has seen a lot of destruction and war since it was built but the most famous ghost to live there is the spirit of Anna Sido. Anna was married but had a love affair with Joachim II, the, the local ruler at the time. As the ruler was dying he asked his son to take care of Anna. The affair had been frowned upon but as both of their parents had passed they had grown closer before he got sick. When he passed his son didn't keep his promise. He immediately imprisoned her in the citadel. No one ever saw Anna again after that. There was no explanation as to where she had gone or if she had been punished for her love affair with the ruler. There had been reports from visitors of the white lady, a ghost seen walking around the citadel late at night. Some felt a sudden cold breeze and feeling of dread while walking around the grounds but still there was no explanation. Years later the citadel was a big tourist attraction and renovations took place. While they began to renovate they found the remains of Anna. She had been walled into a cell and left there. This seemed to confirm the rumours that she was the white lady for all these years. Some people have seen her late at night but others have felt her presence. Even after she was found her spirit had remained. If you visited today you might catch a glimpse of her if you were to be there after nightfall. Coming in at number 4 we have Svitkov Castle. The origin of Svitkov goes back to the prehistoric times. A fort was built there in the 1st century AD. Sits so on the edge of a lake covered in all sides by water making it the perfect place if you're worried about intruders. The castle was built in the early 13th century by King Otaka. It is not known when it was built but the first written mention of the castle was in 1234 when it was owned by the King of Bohemia. It had many owners throughout the years being seized in wars and passed to new rulers. It is now owned by the National Heritage Institute and is open to guests. It is regarded by locals as the creepiest place in Germany. Many refuse to visit or leave before it gets dark as not to disturb the spirits they believe to live there. They believe that the castle is home to a dark supernatural entity. They believe it had been since prehistoric times and has never left the land. There are often voices heard from around the castle. Technical faults happen often with no explanation. It's also been said many animals refuse to go into the building and act strange on the land outside the castle. There have been many times where the staff had lit candles to light up the halls when night falls. There have been times when every candle had been blown out at once sending chills down the spines of anyone in the area. The most haunted part of the castle is the main tower. There are reports that if you sleep in the tower you will pass away within the year. There are at least two confirmed cases of this happening throughout the castle's history. Coming in at number 3 Osnabrück. Osnabrück was once the site in a major pagan temple and burial area. The pagans decided that they would attempt to convert the German people to the Christian faith. This led to a massacre taking place at the temple. The local forces took the lives of those there including the priests. They then desecrated the graves and broke their altar stones. The pagans built their temples and buried the dead on sacred land. It is believed that this act disturbed the deep magic infused in the land. Now every year during the winter solstice and summer equinox something strange happens on the land. Strange orbs of light have been seen moving around the area. Screams are heard from miles away. Stains appear on the stones that still lay there today. Although the town have now been built away from the graveyard you can still visit today. Many locals avoid the land as the spirits there seem angry about what happened to their descendants. It is thought these spirits wield great power and could have revenge when and if they choose to. If you do choose to visit you need to be warned to be respectful. Do your research before and careful when you arrive. Many have reported seeing terrifying things or feelings like being watched while there. No one visits during the solstice and equinox as this is when the spirits are the most active. Coming in at number 2 we have Peacock Island. Peacock Island is situated in the River Havel in Berlin. In 1685 chemist Johann Kuchnell was given financial aid to build a glass foundry on the east of the island. Here he discovered how to produce artificial red glass. When he left the island in 1692 it remained unused for about 100 years until 1793. In 1793 the Prussian king Frederick built the castle for himself and his mistress. This was then passed down through the family and used for many different reasons including being used as an exotic farm. Although the island has a long and exciting history, there are claims it is the original Johann Kuchnell who inhabits the island long after her death. It is claimed that Johann was not only into creating glass but that he experimented with dark magic. It is believed that through his experiments with black magic he had cursed himself. He attempted to flee the island as to not be attached to the curse but this didn't work. In the afterlife he was bound to the land and his old foundry. Those who have visited the island have seen a black figure with glowing red eyes. He is often seen at the stroke of midnight. 
When he is near, you can feel the chill in your bones. You know that you are in the presence of darkness just by being on the island during his hour. His laboratory still stands today, and some have tried to find his old lab to learn all the dark magic and secrets that he tried to hide. It is said a fire nearly destroyed the building. The police believe this to be man made, and it's speculated he was trying to destroy the demons and spirits he had accidentally been working with in the lab. He couldn't escape the curse, and if you don't want to meet the same fate, I would avoid visiting this building. And finally, in at number one, we have the Waldneal Hostert School. The school was first built in 1913 and then closed in 1937 when it was then used by the National Socialism Party. They wanted to use the building as part of their euthanasia program. They wanted to make their bloodlines pure and strong, and they had the idea to use the building to house anyone who was not seen as genetically healthy. All those with hereditary illnesses or who were severely mentally and physically handicapped were classified as lives. Number five on this list is the Devil's Pond. The Devil's Pond is a very beautiful and calm looking body of water on the outside, but it's far more dangerous when you step inside. Located in the Queensland forest, the pond itself almost looks like something straight out of a fairy tale, but there's no happy ending here. 19 people have died in this tiny little pond. That's a staggering amount of people considering how small this one area is. In fact, so many people have had tragic endings here that there's literally a sign that says the creek has claimed many lives. Think about that. It sounds like something straight from a scoop we do story. Beware of this pond or else, but like seriously, beware of the pond. An ancient aboriginal legend tells us of how a runaway bride fell to her death here as she was escaping her wedding. The bride was named Ulana and it's believed that she is actually the cause of the many deaths that have happened here. It's said that she lures and tricks people into coming towards her and then they fall in and suffer the same fate that happened to her so many years ago. I'm not sure if the bride legend is true or not, but even if it isn't, this is clearly an incredibly dangerous spot in its own right. Australia is a big place so don't feel like this is your only option if you're going for a swim when you're there. Number 4 on this list is the National Film and Sound Archive. Located in Canberra, which I actually just discovered is the capital city of Australia, always thought it was Sydney, but actually it's Canberra, so that's fun. But anyways, the Film and Sound Archive is a staple of media culture in Australia. It just hasn't always been that way. Crypto naturalist Tim says the NFSA building is regarded by many ghost hunters or paranormal aficionados as not only one of the most haunted in Canberra, but also one of the most haunted in Australia. It's not because it houses spooky movies though. The ghosts that are reported in the building stem from the period that it was the Institute of Anatomy. That's right guys, this building prior to being what it is now was housing and studying dead bodies for 50 whole years. There were countless scientific experiments that went on here, on hundreds to potentially even thousands of corpses. During this time, it was a museum as well and showcased the dead bodies to those who visited here. Because of all this death, the place is pretty popular among the ghosts. Apparently, the dissection rooms are the most popular with many paranormal sightings here over the years. There's also a little girl who many visitors have seen. She lives in the air vents of the building and pops out through the grates every now and again. Luckily enough, her intent Intentions aren't evil though and often tries to make people laugh. That being said, I still don't think that going to this place that used to house a bunch of dead bodies is the best idea. We have Netflix for a reason now guys, so let's use it. Number 3 on this list is the Beechworth Asylum. Ah yes, the classic haunted asylum. It feels like every country has one, but Australia's is particularly bad. The hospital opened in 1867 and was operational until 1995 when it was finally shut down. During that span when it was functioning, the asylum had over 3,000 patients die in its walls. That is an absurd number of people for a mental hospital. Part of this was because the methods that they used at this place weren't the best. Like most asylums that started in the 1800s, the treatments that they had for people dealing with mental health problems were far from ideal. Shock therapy, shackling patients up, just blatant torture were all things that went down at this asylum. Obviously, this didn't help anyone in dealing with their issues and caused a lot of people to pass away early. Now, these spirits of those who died here haunt the building. Screams can be heard ringing throughout the walls with people thinking it's the ghosts of those who are being shocked or tortured. Some have reported seeing the ghosts of nurses walking around the building. These aren't your typical kind nurses though, people have said that they look evil and unforgiving. Deep feelings of depression can be felt here and just a strong feeling of uneasiness. Personally, I see absolutely no reason to visit this horrible place ever and in all honesty, 
I'm kind of surprised that the building is still standing. Number two on this list is the Monte Cristo Homestead. Built over 150 years ago, this home has had such a tragic history that many believe it to be Australia's most haunted home, and honestly, after reading about the horrific things that happened here, I totally understand why. Australian Geographic writes, A chain of violent events in the house have triggered other supernatural incidents. A maid once plummeted to her death from the upstairs balcony, and the figure of a woman in period dress has been seen walking along the veranda to the bloodstained steps where she fell. A stable boy who burned to death in his bed at the hands of his master is thought to haunt the coach house, while the ghost of a mentally disabled man named Harold wanders the grounds. Kept chained in the caretaker's cottage for 40 years, Harold was found curled up at the feet of his mother's dead body. He died shortly after being sent to a home for the insane. The sound of clanking chains is said to warn of his approach. All of those things are super scary to begin with, but the most sighted ghost at this home isn't even mentioned there. Elizabeth Crawley inherited this house from her husband who passed in 1910, and her ghost has never left. After her husband died, she went into a deep depression and would rarely leave the home. She converted one of the upstairs rooms into a space to perform rituals. It's said that after her husband died, she only left this house twice and eventually died in it by herself. Now you'll know her ghost is present because there'll be a sudden and stark change in temperature whenever she nears. All of this lore has, of course, created a ton of interest around the home and it's been featured on several Australian ghost television shows through the years. However, you can also stay at this home if you want for $200 a night and experience all of this ghostly stuff for yourself. Why you would want to pay $200 of your actual money to get haunted and potentially even cursed is beyond me, but hey, to each their own, I guess. And finally, number one on this list is Port Arthur. Port Arthur is located in the Australian state of Tasmania, which is actually an island state 240 kilometers off of the Australian mainland. Port Arthur initially served as a penal site by the British Empire several hundreds of years ago. Towards the end of the 1700s, Britain stopped sending their prisoners to the Americas and instead started shipping them to Australia. What's even better than going to the mainland, though, was this small island state that they also owned in the middle of nowhere. Countless prisoners over the following decades were shipped off to Tasmania, with Port Arthur being one of the biggest final destinations for these criminals. Once they got there, their lives were never the same. Many of these people that were shipped here had committed small crimes out of sheer necessity, stealing some food to survive or something to keep their families warm. The severity of the crime mattered little to the British authorities though, and even if it was something as small and insignificant as this, you could very easily find yourself stuck in this prison for the remainder of your life. The prisoners that got sent here were forced to work tirelessly in the timber, lumbering, and shipbuilding industries. Port Arthur actually boomed for the next 100 years with more and more convicts being sent here. This was obviously very beneficial for the British government, but not so much so for the people who had to make this place their home. Many of them were mercilessly killed for no good reason. They were often tortured consistently if they weren't working hard enough or had done something that wasn't totally up to the standard. It really was a horrible way of life for those who got sent to Port Arthur. At around the end of the 1800s, Port Arthur started to slow down and eventually stopped altogether. The death of this location didn't end though, because in 1996, Port Arthur saw one of Australia's darkest moments ever. 35 people were gunned down in a mass shooting that took place at Port Arthur. All of this death from various generations has caused Port Arthur to be one of Australia's most haunted spots. In fact, over the years, there have been more than 2,000 incidents of unexplained paranormal activity. Things moving, voices shrieking, change in temperature, you name it, it's taken place at this location before. The asylum at Port Arthur is said to be the most haunted spot here, with reports of people getting scratched and touched by unseen entities. Port Arthur has had a horrible history to it, and it's not a place I'd recommend venturing out to if you do happen to catch yourself in the Australian state of Tasmania. Number five on this list is the Hoher Market. Hoher Market is directly in the center of Vienna in Austria and is quite beautiful today. It has fancy supermarkets, boutique cafes, and high profile stores for people to window shop and explore. They're Four, it's definitely a solid tourist attraction, but it may not be the best spot to go visit after you hear some of the things that happened here in the past. This market for over 500 years was where the state sanctioned executions would take place. 500 years of people being killed off has resulted in thousands of deaths piling up over those said years. The manner to how these people were killed has changed and morphed over the years as well too. Most were hangings, but some were quarterings, which is a process 
process where someone gets chopped up into tiny little pieces. Yeah, it's pretty graphic. Because of this, there have been many reports of hauntings in this market. Apparitions of people dressed in clothes dating back to the 14th century have shown themselves to people before. One report has someone detailing an instance that they turned a corner and swore they saw a dead corpse right in front of them. When they returned to the location with another person though, there was no sign of it at all. Other people have sworn that they've seen the ghost of an executioner here before, standing and waiting to hang someone. I honestly think that going to this market would be okay, but if I was to go, then I'd much rather go in the daytime. Probably not the spot you want to be walking around at nighttime with the ghosts of the executed. Number four on this list is Seitenstetkes. Six. I hope I pronounced that right, but I kind of highly doubt it. Either way, this is a building in Vienna that you shouldn't want to stay in at all. It all started when a woman tried to murder her husband. Not the best way to start a story, but here we are. The woman who lived in this building tried to poison her husband, but on the same night she meant to do it actually died herself. Now, her spirit still resides at this place and haunts the people who stay here. Visitors of this building say that they'll see this ghostly apparition sitting in a wooden rocking chair and swaying back and forth, looking as eerie as ever. Apparently, this wooden chair also emits electromagnetic rays. Why it does this, or from where this legend came from, is currently unknown. This woman also isn't alone in her haunting of this place, either. She was said to have a very pretty white cat, and this ghost kitty still sticks by her. The cat wanders the halls and can appear and disappear as it chooses. It's said that if someone looks at it, then mischief will find them and cause them major problems in their life. I should also also note that this building isn't even that nice to begin with. Like at least the market I could get a nice coffee or something, but best case scenario here is that I get bothered with rats, whereas the worst case scenario is I get murdered by some ghost woman. Not the spot that I recommend you stay at if you're heading to Vienna. Number three on this list is Malavin Spitz Bubenhaus. Now that is super hard to say, so for the remainder of this entry I'm gonna refer to this as the Vienna Prison. This place was put out of commission a long time ago, several hundred years ago in fact. There is a new building building there now, but it's still haunted with the same ghosts that riddled this prison several hundred years ago. The prison was known for something truly horrible. Torture. Apparently, presumed criminals would be taken into the basement of this prison and brutally tortured in this spot. This torture was so horrible, though, that those that were kept here would sometimes take their own life prior to this treatment. The souls of those that were tortured and the souls of those that killed themselves are the ones that haunt this place to this day. Blood-curdling screams have been heard throughout this entire building. Building. People have also reported feeling attacked by spirits here, like they're ripping at their own soul and tearing them apart. Just because you destroyed the initial building that caused these atrocities to occur doesn't always mean that the ghosts of those that were hurt will automatically move on. This is exactly what happened here, and it's why you guys should never go. Number two on this list is Friedhof der Nemenlosen. This place is a cemetery, and it's been nicknamed the Cemetery of the Nameless. Amy Script details the history of this place beautifully by writing, Throughout the 1800s, the Danube River, which cuts through Austria, was often littered with bodies. These were usually drowning victims, those who had committed suicide, and often cause of death was unknown. Once the river had claimed these lives, it would carry the lifeless bodies of its victims ashore, hence dumping them in the same area. As even more bodies accumulated, respectful locals sought out solutions to offer them peace. The Cemetery of the Nameless was erected to offer these unidentified nameless people a place to rest, because they could not be interred at any of the Catholic cemeteries in Vienna. Probably as many of the victims were of suicide. Bodies were routinely collected and interred at the cemetery, sporting markers listing them as nameless people. Almost 500 people were interred at the original cemetery, which was eventually abandoned. Today, a more modern and smaller segment of the cemetery continues to stand. This burial plot holds the remains of 104 people. Of those buried in the cemetery, 61 remain nameless, whereas other were identified by family or friends. Because of this dark history, this place has been labeled as one of the most haunted cemeteries in the entire world. Disembodied voices coming from these nameless dead can be heard constantly throughout this cemetery. It's believed that the nameless can never truly rest until their identity is revealed. Their souls will never find peace until the world knows who they really were. Apparently, the former caretaker of the cemetery haunts this space as well, and he'll often appear to the visitors. Those that go here have felt like some sort of entity is also pulling at them. Not physically, but as if their souls are being pulled in multiple directions.
directions, as if somebody needs your help. This cemetery is definitely on the do not go list if you ever find yourself in Austria. And finally, number one on this list is Musham Castle. Musham Castle isn't just one of the most haunted spots in Austria or in Europe, it's right up there as being one of the most haunted spots in the world. Ghosts of soldiers, witch trials, werewolves, torturous owners, all of this has happened in the walls of this castle. Starting with the first thing on that list, ghosts of soldiers, there have apparently been over 45 battles that have taken place at this location. It's been said that the ground was soaked with blood during these fights and they were as gruesome as anything the world had seen to that point. Then moving on to the witch trials, this place has seen some witches die. In the late 1600s, tons of accused witches were killed here in gruesome ways. Those that weren't murdered had their hands chopped off or were burned with iron indicating to the world that they were criminals. The rumors of werewolves didn't start until the 1800s when animals started disappearing from around the area. Then their bodies would start showing up decapitated around the castle and had the locals living close to the castle believe in a deadly werewolf. Then there were also the rumors that came out about a vicious owner of this castle who would take people inside and torture them before killing them. This was proven when a torture chamber was found in the castle. Obviously, all of this has made the castle one of the most haunted spots in the world. People have said that they get the sensation of hands reaching out and grabbing them from thin air while they're at this castle. Some people have even gone mad after going to this place, saying that it feels like a parasite has entered into their brain. The werewolf has also never been found, and some of the locals believe that it still haunts this place to this day. This castle cannot be visited in any circumstance. It's certainly interesting to research, but visiting it is way too much of a risk. Number five on this list is the Saz van Ghent Haunted House. As is customary on our top haunted places lists, pretty much every country has one home that's deeply haunted and this is Belgium's. Culture Trip says, near the Dutch border there was a haunted house so popular it attracted ghost hunters from all over Europe. Its fame became its downfall and the owner had it demolished for safety reasons in 2011. After all, old crumbled walls and moldy wood are a health hazard if downtrodden by enthusiastic photographers and are sure to annoy the locals. Besides safety reasons, the owner had his sights set on selling the property with or without the house. According to local legends, a German soldier was electrocuted near the house during World War I and his ghost remains in the home. He was joined by four Canadian soldiers during World War II. Their tank hit a mine on the property. There are several unsettling tales about the house. Cell phones suddenly had no service, watches stopped ticking, doors slammed shut, and curious visitors captured strange mist on their cameras. Whatever the truth, we may never know. Since it was demolished, the haunted house of Saz van Ghent has turned into a legend. Now even though the house is no longer there, the ghosts are still said to be in the area. The land here is deeply haunted with our respect of World War I and World War II spirits. I find it really interesting that this home, or the ruins of it, aren't even haunted by a Belgian soldier at all, but literally by the ghosts of soldiers from different countries. I know that they died in unsettling and unnatural ways, and usually that's enough to leave a spiritual presence, but maybe the fact that it wasn't their home country added to this as well. Maybe it's harder to rest in peace when you're on foreign soil, when your family and loved ones are thousands of kilometers away. This is honestly just a theory that I was coming up with as I was writing this, so please comment down below if you think it might have some legs. Also, it should go without saying, but don't go visit this spot if you're ever in Belgium. Number four on this list is La Roche and Arden. We've already spoke about the haunted house. Well, another staple, especially for our European countries, is the haunted castle. The castle La Roche and Arden is definitely one of Belgium's most haunted. Culture Trip writes, In the castle of La Roche and Arden, there used to live a nobleman with a very beautiful daughter named Berth. He figured the best way to get a son-in-law was to organize a tournament and give the winner Berth's hand in marriage. The story doesn't actually mention what Berth thought of all this. The Count of Montague participated fiercely, despite already being engaged to another woman, Countess Alix de Selm. He won every game, but near the end of the tournament, a mysterious small knight in black entered the contest. Said knight killed the count and took birth to the bridal chamber. The next morning, the couple were found dead on the cliffs underneath the bridal chamber's window. The mysterious knight turned out to be Countess Alex de Selm, who had made a pact with the devil so she could kill her cheating fiancé and his
his wife to be. Ever since then, the Countess ghost haunts the castle. Well, that story honestly screams Shakespeare play to me if I've ever heard one. We got drama, betrayal, murder, it literally has everything. And usually when it has all of those elements, a ghost is left behind to haunt what remains. This story is no different, and the residents of this castle since then, plus any visitors who have come here, are constantly terrorized by the ghost of this countess. Apparently she doesn't hide her presence at all, but makes herself very known. She'll attack visitors and has even been reported as possessing people. Most of the time, people make a full recovery from these possessions, but there have been reports where the trauma never goes away. Anyone who's willing to make a pact with the devil is certainly someone I want to stay away from, and being in ghost form makes that even worse. Number three on this list is the Sonian Forest. The Sonian Forest has a very strange phenomenon that occurs in it, which is locals believing it's haunted. Culture Trip says, Diogen is a strange fog that hovers in the Sonian Forest near Brussels. The fog has been described as greenish, but is also gray, orange, or white. What's consistent in the descriptions are small shadowy figures in the fog and the sound of laughing children. The name Diogen is a misspelling from the original name Diogen, which literally translates to the eyes. It's called the eyes because there's always something large in the fog that stares at you. There have been reports of the figures near the forest that dart in front of cars and a bloody little handprint on the car window that leaves as soon as the fog is gone. A bloody little handprint. That is a big no thank you from me, guys. This sounds like something that has come directly out of a horror film and something that should be avoided at all costs. Nobody knows why this fog appears, but the general consensus is that some very powerful ghostly entity conjures it. Who this entity or entities is or why they reside in this forest is unknown, just that they're extremely powerful. Locals are also very scared of this spot and it's become infamous for disappearances throughout the years. Unless you want to disappear in a greenish smoke, I'd avoid it at all costs. Number two on this list is the John McRae Bunker. Ypres is a city full of history. You could almost say it's haunted by history. Step into the quiet Essex Farm Cemetery by the canal to uncover a ghostly site. The bunker is supposedly haunted by poet and physician John McRae. Many ghost hunters who come here claim to hear echoes of voices, gunshots from World War One, or even witness the ghost of John McRae and his friend Alex. The bunker is a memorial site in honor of John McRae's memory. He wrote the famous poem in Flanders Fields for friend and fellow soldier Alex Hemmler. Hemmler died on the battlefield and McRae followed not long after passing away from pneumonia. Some say that after hearing gunshots, you'll see flashes of Hemmler's ghost. Many European countries have at least one site that is haunted by the ghosts of soldiers, usually from World War I or World War II, and this bunker is Belgium's. It just so happens to be a very famous soldier though. Growing up in Canada and being Canadian, I've read and heard the poem in Flanders Fields many times. It honestly makes me really sad to hear this legend and know that John McRae's soul has yet to find peace and still clings to earth in what I can only imagine is a horrible purgatory state. If you do ever go to this place, then make sure to show some respect to him, his friend Alex, and all the other soldiers who lost their lives here. Maybe that's what his soul needs to finally pass on. And finally, number one on this list is the Crypts of Laken. These crypts are very close to the Royal Crypts of Belgium, but have been dubbed far creepier and far more haunted. Crypts are usually pretty creepy to begin with. One of the most haunted spots in the world is the Paris Catacombs, after all. These get especially riddled with ghosts, though, after they've been abandoned for a long period of time. And that's exactly what went down at the Crypts of Laken. For 30 years, these crypts were completely forgotten about and abandoned, and those that were kept here just rotted away underground. 30 years later, a cemetery was built over top of this place and people started coming back. When they went down there again though, it wasn't how they remembered it. Creatures, dark beasts with red glowing eyes and an appetite for apparently only flesh live down there now. These underground crypts that stretch super far used to be only the home to the dead, but now they're also the home to these demon things. I personally see no appeal to going down to an ancient abandoned underground crypt anyways, but throw on some werewolf wannabes and this is definitely a spot that I'd avoid. Number five on this list is a road to Petropolis. This road comes from Rio de Janeiro and goes to Petropolis. And before I talk about why this road is haunted, I do want to say that the name Petropolis is so freaking cool. Like, of course, a place called Petropolis is haunted. That name was just inherently meant for magic and lore. Anyways, guys, this is a road that leads out of the big part of Rio and goes to the northern mountain city of Petropolis. This road is near a national park and considering it also goes through the mountains, 
mountains can get pretty secluded at points. It's along this road that you may encounter the vision of a ghost. Apparently there's no rhyme or reason to who this ghost will show itself to, but drivers have reported seeing a stunningly beautiful blonde woman wave to them on the side of the road. The drivers will stop and see if she needs any help, and this woman will tell them that a car crash has happened in a nearby ditch. Typically, the drivers will get out of their car and go see if they can help. Sure enough, as the woman described, there will be a car that's turned over in a ditch, smoking, as if it's just swerved off the road and crashed. When the people look inside the vehicle though, they will see the dead body of that same woman who just pointed them in the direction of the vehicle. A few seconds will pass where the person will internalize what they're seeing, and then the car and the woman will vanish into thin air, like it was never there in the first place. Legend says that this woman died from a car accident along this road when she swerved into a ditch. Now she haunts the road and all that drive through it. She isn't necessarily out to harm you, which is always a good thing, but the people that have seen this are typically scarred for life. They will be standing in this ditch looking at the empty space where a car used to be completely shell-shocked. I personally can't imagine what would be going through my head if that was me standing there. I also feel bad for this ghostly woman too. She obviously doesn't want to hurt anyone, but her spirit can't seem to pass on and get the closure that it needs. Maybe the reason that she shows people her death is because when she initially crashed in her car, nobody stopped to check up on her. That's my theory anyways, but let me know in the comments down below if you have any theories of your own as to why this ghost is showing them her car crash. Number four on this list is Brasilia City Hall. Brasilia City Hall is a government building that has had quite a scary history. This building is said to be haunted now and it's no wonder why considering the amount of unsettling things that have went down in this location. First off, before this building was even constructed, there was a mortuary here. This was one of the biggest mortuaries in the area and housed thousands of bodies while it was operating. During that time, there were already rumors about it being haunted. The spirits of some of the dead that wanted to cling to life haunting the space. The legend of a haunting got blown up though when the mortuary burned down with a bunch of dead bodies inside of it. This was when people decided to transition this from a mortuary to the building that it is today, the Brasilia City Hall. All of the ghosts that had been accumulating during its time of being a mortuary though and in that bad fire, they didn't go anywhere. Cabinets flying open, things being thrown around the room, lights turning on and off, and sounds that come from apparently thin air. These are all regular occurrences at the Brasilia City Hall. It doesn't stop with just that though. In fact, the spirits that occupy this place can become quite a nuisance. There's a famous story about how one man was left in the building. He was finishing up with his day and was about to leave, but he got locked in that building. He was the only one on the premises though, and it's impossible for him to lock himself in, so somebody else had to have done it. The only explanation anybody could come up with was the spirits at Brasilia Hall. Frankly, I doubt that we would be able to visit this place anyways, considering it's a government building, but if you do, then pay very close attention to the locks on the door, you might just get locked in yourself. Number three on this list is the Imperial Museum of Brazil. The Imperial Museum of Brazil is apparently one of the most haunted locations in the country. It's located in Petropolis and was built right where the palace of Dom Pedro II used to live. Dom Pedro II, according to Google, was the second and last monarch of the Empire of Brazil, reigning for over 58 years. He was born in Rio de Janeiro, the seventh child of Emperor Dom Pedro I of Brazil and Empress Dona Maria Lipoldina, and thus a member of the Brazilian branch of the House of Braganza. Now even though he died in 1891, his ghost has never truly left. It's said that this museum is often host to his ghost, and also the ghosts of the staff that used to work at his residence. These ghosts don't appear to be particularly harmful in their nature. In fact, many people have reported having conversations with these people, not even recognizing that they were talking to a ghost until after the interaction. Hundreds of sightings have happened over the years of spirits walking through the museum in the night. The whole story reminds me a lot of the movie Night at the Museum, except instead of the museum's exhibits coming to life, it's a bunch of ghosts. As much as I preach not going to these haunted spots, if there was anyone that I would go to, then it would have to be this one. I honestly think it'd be pretty cool to have a conversation with the ghost of the last reigning monarch of Brazil. I can't say a lot of people have done that before. Number two on this list is the Dream Beach. This beach is located in Sao Paulo and like most Brazilian beaches, it's quite beautiful. It's an amazing spot for tourists and people looking for their fix of surfing. It's also an attraction for people who are interested in the paranormal considering it's very haunted. The Dream Beach is said to be haunted by a couple. This couple reportedly drowned together at this beach many years ago and now their spirits haunted shores. The whole origin story of how they drowned is kind of up in the air but people believe that bystanders saw them drowning and nobody sprung to action to help them. Instead, they all just watched. This obviously angered this couple and now the spirits believe 
that humans are inherently evil. Several drownings have been linked to this ghostly couple in the past. An apparition will appear in the water and pretend that they're drowning. People will hear the cries and go to save them, but will be pulled into the waves a little bit too far and then drown in the ocean. I personally find it a little bit ridiculous that these ghosts would be trying to kill the people that decide to save them. Like, I would think that they would want to hurt the people who don't try to save the apparition, but I suppose they're simply just angry with humans as a whole. These ghosts will also appear on the shore sometimes and let out loud shrieks. All the lifeguards and people who monitor the beach are familiar with the lore, with many of them having their own run-ins with this couple in the past. The problem with these ghosts is that if you do go to this beach and see somebody drowning, then you may be walking into a trap by going to help. But if you don't go to help and it's a real person, then you'll have to live with yourself knowing that you let somebody die. Brazil has a lot of beautiful beaches, and if it was me, I would look to one of the other ones for my surfing fix. Number one on this list is the Jolma building. This Jolma building, which is now called Praca de Bandeira, was a building that was located in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and was completed in 1971. This was a big skyscraper and had 25 floors to it and could have hundreds of people in it at one time. Sadly, something extremely tragic happened at this building in 1974 when hundreds of people were in fact inside of it. The building caught fire and had a horrible blaze that killed hundreds of people. The death toll rose above 200 with some people saying that it could be closer to four or five hundred. This horrible fire started due to an electrical short in an air conditioning unit. This building was not built to handle something like this either as it didn't have adequate means of escaping and there were no sprinklers installed in the building. The fire crews took far too long to get there as well due to the traffic jam that was a mounting surrounding the building. This fire goes down as the second worst skyscraper fire in history only behind the September 11th attacks and fatalities. Someone who had arrived very early on is reported saying, when I got there, the flames were already racing up through the building. Already people were jumping from the windows. All of this horrible death has led this location to become extremely haunted. Obviously, after this brutal fire, there was not much left of the building, but they decided to start construction on the area again, and that's where you get the new building, Praca de Bandera. Even though they changed the name, the spirits still cling to this location. Many reports of ghosts have been told by the people that visit this spot. One common story is the apparition of an older man that will appear to certain people. He's covered in third degree burns and will wail and scream as if he's still burning. Another story is the 13 people in the elevator. It's believed that 13 people got trapped in the elevator during the fire and burned to death in there together. Stories have been told of people waiting for the elevator and when it comes, seeing 13 people that look half dead standing there in front of them. The elevator's lights will flicker sometimes and it may just stop without warning as well. What happened decades ago, and I cannot echo this enough, is such a horrible and tragic event. It's no wonder that the spirits of these people potentially still linger at this location. Number five on this list is Tranquil Sanatorium in British Columbia. Tranquil Sanatorium has quite an extensive and tragic history to it, which has caused its walls to be the home to many undead spirits. A sanatorium, if you weren't familiar, is an establishment which has the sole purpose of housing those with long-term illnesses and is often associated with tuberculosis. The one that we're talking about right now is no different. It was was built in 1907 as a facility to treat people with tuberculosis. However, it didn't stay like this for very long. The purpose of the facility eventually changed to become an insane asylum. It acted as this mental institute for a while until finally becoming abandoned in the late 1980s. Due to its deep history with death, disease, mental illness, it's no wonder that the Tranquil Sanatorium is now deeply haunted. The layout of this facility screams something out of a Stephen King book. It has several buildings that are connected by poorly lit underground tunnels. The building itself looks all too eerie from the outside as well with dirty cream colored walls that have seen far better days as rot and mold slowly devour them. Visitors of this place report feeling extremely uneasy. A common note for most people that visit is the presence of orbs. Strange balls of light that flutter throughout the building and then disappear. Some people have reported seeing a ghostly apparition on the sixth floor. This ghost takes the form of a woman not older than 30. She appears to be crying and screaming. The tunnels are said to be particularly haunted. People have reported screams coming from nowhere, flashes of movement, menacing and animalistic groans that make you feel as if somebody is right behind you. Children can also be heard playing every now and again in some of the more open areas of the building. Clearly this place's dark history has impacted it greatly and just because physical humans 
decided to abandon it in the 80s doesn't mean that it was truly abandoned for good. Number four on this list is the Firkins House. The Firkins House is part of Fort Edmonton Park, which you guessed it, is located in Edmonton, Alberta. Fort Edmonton Park is a little tourist attraction that has buildings from 1885, 1905, and 1920 to represent the homes of the time. One of the houses is the Firkins House. This home is interesting because during my research, I couldn't find any particular evidence of wrongdoings or tragic events at this home. In fact, for the most part, it seems like a pretty normal house. People have lived there before and no harm has befell them, but it seems that after they moved out and the home was donated, that's when things started to go a little bit haywire. There are reportedly three ghosts or demons that haunt this home, each one scarier and more dangerous than the next. The first one is the ghost of a beautiful floating woman who is dressed in all white. People have said that they've spotted her in the windows of the home looking out at them or slowly drifting throughout the living room. The second one is the ghost of a little boy. The boy will appear to certain people looking extremely ill. It is currently unknown if this boy died in and around the area or what disease he is suffering from, but it is said that he resides in the home with the woman in white. The third being is by far the scariest of all three. A ventriloquist dummy that will appear in the home or in the cupboards. This thing can move all by itself and talk by itself. It is very similar to the popular horror franchise Chucky and it's said by some to be seeking to harm the living. I'm not sure if the ghost of the ventriloquist has taken over this dummy or if the dummy has taken on its own persona, but I definitely do not want to go anywhere where the primary residence is a demon puppet. Number three on this list is the Five Fisherman Restaurant. This is a restaurant in Halifax, Nova Scotia known for its exceptional oysters and also its ghostly inhabitants. The ground that this restaurant sits on wasn't always utilized for serving up fish and chips though. In fact, it has a very long history. In the early 1800s is when the building went up and for a long time it acted as the town's only school. Nothing ghoulish or demonic about that. However, at around the turn of the century the school moved and the building took on a new purpose. It became the mortuary for Halifax and made its dealings with the dead. Now not every mortuary is going to become haunted, but this one had quite a lot to deal with over the years. In 1912 the unsinkable ship, the Titanic, sunk. It sunk roughly 640 kilometers off of the eastern shores of Canada and therefore the closest places to assist with the rescue was these eastern provinces. Halifax acted as the leader in these rescue processes and because of that the mortuary had an onslaught of bodies of people whom had died on the ship. Five years after that tragedy, Halifax incurred one of their own with the massive Halifax explosion. This was where a munitions ship exploded and it killed roughly 2,000 people just like that. This mortuary served as the primary designation for both of these incidents and due to the unnatural deaths here, it makes sense that some spirits have clung on. Guests and employees alike have reported seeing ghosts all over this mortuary that turned restaurant. One of the dishwashers reported running out of the restaurant when he looked up from what he was doing and was staring directly at a ghost like Spectre. The restaurant has attempted to have serious renovations done, however I don't think that any amount of structural change will get these spirits to rest for good. Number two on this list is the Frank Slide. Now even though the Frank Slide sounds like it could be a fun, popular dance move that takes over TikTok for a few weeks, it is far more morbid than that. On April 29th in 1903 in the mining town of Frank, which at that time was part of the Northwest Territories but it is now a section of Alberta, there was a horrible tragedy. 110 million tons of limestone and rock came tumbling down in one of Canada's biggest landslides ever. This fell onto part of the town of Frank. Frank was located right next to Turtle Mountain, which after extensive mining had grown unstable. On April 29th, it all came crashing down and claimed the lives of 70 to 90 people. It is still to this day Canada's most deadly landslide to ever occur in history and was a horrible tragedy that can only remind us how fleeting life can be. I think the craziest part about this landslide as well is that it wasn't just miners who were killed. Their wives, their families, all of them died at the hands of the Frank Slide. The remains of these bodies were never recovered either as the damage from the slide was far too devastating. Where all of this happened is now a section of a town called Crow's Nest Pass and over a century later the ghosts of the dead still haunt the area. This place is somewhere where visitors have reported feeling very unsafe. They say that the overall feelings of uneasiness are almost too much to bear and that they have to leave. Cries 
howls, screams. This can all be heard late at night as you're trying to sleep. Lanterns will be seen in the night walking around at the hands of unknown apparitions. It is basically a full ghost town of people who never deserve to die in the first place, all wanting to get a second just to feel their lives again as they were so unfairly ripped away from them. Definitely one of Canada's most horrific tragedies and now home to one of its most haunted locations. Number one on this list is the Banff Springs Hotel. This hotel is located in Banff, Alberta and is truly one of the creepiest places that I've ever read about. Now first off, I want to note the hotel itself looks gorgeous on the outside. The beautiful nature it is surrounded by is stunning and the hotel gives me some serious Harry Potter Hogwarts vibes. However, when I say that this place is surrounded by nature, I really mean it. It is totally out on its own with no other buildings in sight at all. The secluded site has been around for 132 years and has housed its fair share of visitors. Some of these visitors have had some incredible stays. I mean, when you look it up online, the hotel has a 4.7 Google rating. So, I mean, it's pretty freaking good. Some of the guests, though, they never checked out. In the 1920s, a couple was set to have their wedding at this hotel. On the day of the ceremony, though, the bride, while she was walking down one of the hotel's beautiful marble staircases, tripped and fell, smacking her head on her descent and dying on the spot. This bride's spirit is one of the most notable sightings people have had when they're staying at this hotel. It's it's said that they often see a phantom in a wedding dress ascending and descending the stairs very quickly. She's also been seen in the ballroom dancing alone, potentially dreaming of the dance that she wanted so desperately to have with the husband that she never got to marry. In 1975, a longtime bellman of the Hotel Sam died there. Since then, sightings of Sam have been pretty consistent. One story details how two women lost their room key and called the front desk to go and get it. The front desk person sent someone to go and open their room for these ladies. When that person had got there though, the ladies were already in the room and said that another bellman had let them in. They described Sam to a T when they spoke about the bellman who helped them out. Instances like this have occurred time and time again at the hotel with many people believing his spirit is still working there. Finally with this hotel, you have room 873. Room 873 is rumored to be the home of a gruesome murder. One evening a family was staying there and the father for some unknown reason lost his mind murdering his family and himself. After completely refurbishing the room, the hotel put it back in service. But now people who have stayed there report hearing the screams and the cries as if they were still dying. If you have to stay at this hotel, definitely avoid room 873. Number 5 on this list is the Chateau de Camargue. The Chateau de Camargue is located in Perigord, an ancient region of France. The chateau isn't as beautiful as it once was, some of its former glory lost to time and also to war. The chateau was a critical point of interest in the 100 years war between France and Britain. It was the host to one of the more brutal fights that the war ever saw and was eventually captured by the British. As was typical back then, when you captured a place, many of the people that were running that place were either captured or put to death. One person of interest was put to death by being beheaded and that was the young lover of the daughter of the Earl of Camargue. It said that this man was deeply in love with the daughter and that she was in love with him as well. His beheading didn't seem like a major point of interest to the British at the time, but it actually left a bit of a spirit behind. What's really interesting about this story though is that it wasn't the spirit of this young man that was left behind. It also wasn't the spirit of the young daughter or even the Earl of Camarque himself. In fact, it was the spirit of this young man's horse. The horse that this young man rode into battle with to attempt to defend the chateau and the horse that he had his whole life. Its ghost has yet to pass on. It's said that the ghost of this horse wanders the grounds of the chateau searching for its master. People who have ventured into the castle have reported hearing the clicking of hooves and a deep groan from a horse. People have also reported seeing this dead horse's ghost walking around the grounds of the chateau as if it was defending it from potential invaders like it did in the past. It's suggested that if you do intend to visit this chateau, that you don't bring any negative energy with you. The horse could potentially interpret this as a threat and come after you. Some have even suggested bringing a carrot or an apple and leaving it at the front of the chateau as a sign of good faith towards this ghostly steed. Number four on this list is the Palace de Tuileries. 
The Palace des Tuileries is home to one of France's most known ghosts who has been nicknamed the Red Man. The Red Man has been around for several hundred years and has two potential stories of origin. The first story talks about a man nicknamed Jack the Skinner worked for Catherine de Medici after her husband Henry II died. He worked as a hitman for her and would be sent to murder potential political foes. He was exceptional at his work but eventually there grew a time where the Queen was worried that he knew too much about her. After all, he knew exactly how many people she had had executed considering he had done the executing. To make sure her secrets were safe, she had another man murder him. He killed him in the garden, which I should note is typically the area linked to this haunting, and then he left his body in said garden. When he came back to fetch the corpse, it was missing. Then the queen's astrologist told her that he foretold some great disaster happening to the people of Tuileries and that John would be at the forefront of it. Since then, whenever the red man appears, it's said that a tragic event will happen to the people surrounding his appearance. The second origin story is that when this palace was built, the red man was already there. This ghost spoke to Catherine de Medici and foretold her death, and even though she forsook him and the palace that she had built, the prediction he had made turned out to eventually be true. Pierre-Jean de Berenger, a famous French poet, describes the Red Man as being a small man clothed from top to toe in scarlet, whose eye is so piercing and unearthly that it terrifies the most courageous. He never speaks, nor air his visits of much length. He vanishes soon after his presence is discovered. This has been echoed throughout time as many French nobles have received visits from the Red Man before. Henry IV, Louis XVI, Mary Antoinette have all had visits from him in the past. There's even a story talking about how the Red Man appeared in front of Napoleon right before his death. There are tons of beautiful palaces in France, and if it was me, I'd avoid this one and go to one of them. Better to be safe than sorry when we're dealing with a devil-like demon whose presence means impending doom. Number three on this list is the Rue de Chantre. This is considered by most to be the most haunted streets in France. It's located in Paris on the island and is right next to the Notre Dame Cathedral. This street is said to be haunted by the ghosts of many children. As with most ghost stories, this didn't come out of thin air, but from a horrible tragedy that took place on this street just over 100 years ago. In the early 1900s, there was a hotel that was located on this street. This hotel didn't really act as a hotel though, because during that time there was a massive outbreak of tuberculosis. The children in the area who had come down with the disease were sent to this hotel to quarantine. They were locked in the bedrooms of this hotel and couldn't leave at any point for risk of infecting other people. Some children died during these quarantines, which is already bad, but the main tragedy happened roughly a decade later in 1910. In 1910, there was a great flood of Paris where the River Seine overflowed and flooded the city. All the children that were currently locked inside their bedrooms at this time drowned during that flood. Nobody knows for sure the exact number of children who died in this tragedy, but it was certainly enough to make a spiritual imprint on the street. Now their souls go without rest and live along the street. People have heard the laughter and also the crying of children. They have heard the muffled screams as if they're screaming through water. They've also seen these children before peering out at them from around corners looking extremely sad and lonely. The spot acts as an attraction for supernatural hunters, but a landmark that I wouldn't recommend visiting. Number two on this list is Mont Saint Michel. Mont Saint Michel is one of the most beautiful and unique castles on the entire planet, in my opinion. How it's constructed and where it's located, it almost doesn't even seem like something out of real life. This castle is located off of the Normandy coast, and the only connection that it has to France is a road that goes underwater when it's high tide. How this place got made has a bit of a supernatural story to it. Apparently, the archangel Michael appeared to Saint Aubert in a dream and told him to start building here. When he resisted, Michael burned a hole right in his head. After this incident, the castle began its construction and it took quite a while to become the beauty that we have today. It was a work in progress with more things being added over the years. Now because of this castle's location directly in the water, it is extremely hard to attack and was never captured during the 100 years war. 
During said war, one of the major commanders of this castle was Louis d'Estouville. His ghost is one of the most common sightings at this place. He apparently is responsible for the killing of thousands of English soldiers and had battles that were so deadly the water around them would turn red with blood. He's said to patrol the castle and act as a watchman of sorts for intruders and people posing a threat. Similar to our previous entry of the horse, one of his main objectives is to keep the castle safe. He isn't the only ghost at this spot though. The ghosts of monks can also be seen praying and meditating at this location. For a long time, this castle housed several hundred monks until they were ultimately kicked out from the space. Their spirits still linger in this place though, although they aren't nearly as frightening as the weathered war general, in my opinion. Number one on this list is the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs is unlike anything else on the entire planet and is the breeding ground for scary stories. These catacombs are a collection of tunnels that are underneath the city of Paris and stretch for over 2,000 acres. The tunnels act as an underground cemetery where they house over six Six million dead bodies. This is one of the largest collections of the dead in the entire world and if that wasn't enough, you can actually see their skulls as they all line the walls. These catacombs are extremely difficult to navigate. Seeing as there are over 2,000 acres of them and it's underground, people have reported getting extremely lost when they're trying to explore them. This is part of the reason why only a portion of them are open to the public today. But all of this has led to a plethora of ghost stories and legends over the years. For instance, in 2004, a group of police officers were investigating an area of the catacombs that was closed to the public and they came upon something unexpected. A bar, a living room, a workshop, and a meeting area for over 20 people, they were all found. This was alongside a PA system, a camera system recording the area, and a pirated means of electricity. All of this was more than suspicious, but when the officers returned a few days later with some more people, everything was gone, except for a note that read, don't search. This isn't all there is to the catacombs though. In the 1990s, a group was searching through them and found a video camera lying on the ground. They picked it up and examined it and saw that there was a recording. The recording was clearly of a man who was very lost in the catacombs and extremely frantic. Scary voices could be heard in the background and the heavy breathing of this man indicated his panic. Finally, the camera fell to the ground and we could hear the man scream. These are just two of the more famous stories to come from these catacombs, but so many other ones of ghosts or demons haunting the area have come from this place. If you were to ever go here, then make sure you have a strong sense of direction and a flashlight because the last thing you would want is to get lost in an underground haunted graveyard. In at number five, we have Develli's Cave. Develli's Cave is one of the most famous and well-known haunted caves in the world, and tourists and locals visit often to try and come in contact with the paranormal spirits that haunt the cave. It's located in Penteli, a mountain to the north of Athens, Greece, and has been around since the fifth century. Back then, it was used as a marble quarry by the builders of the Acropolis, and the cave was actually discovered by accident during work for the extraction of marble. During the Middle Ages, it was used by Orthodox Christian hermits, and later on a small church was built at the entrance of the cave, featuring an unusual double layout, one part devoted to St. Spyridon and one to St. Nicholas. It was used as a place of worship for the followers of Pan and the Nymphs. It is also believed to have been and still could possibly be used by other religious groups, mainly occultists. The cave got its name from a belief that an infamous 19th century thief and robber named Develli used the cave as a hideout, and legend has it that he hid his treasures inside the cave, and over the years many people have come to try and find his fortune. Many times throughout history the cave has been used as a shelter for civilians, and in 1977 construction work started on the cave, and it's unclear who was behind it. Many believe it might have been the works of the government wanting to use the cave and surrounding areas for the US and Greek army. The cave has been associated with various paranormal activity and ghost sightings since the ancient times, this being the main reason it's being used for a place of worship. The mystical character of the cave continues to fascinate people to this day, and dozens of urban legends are connected to the cave. There are numerous tales of people experiencing strange and abnormal activity that has taken place in and around the cave. Stories tell of electronics that stop working, water flowing the wrong way, and disappearances of explorers who enter the cave to never emerge again. Also details such as a small handprint near the entrance furthers the mystery of this place. In at number 4, the Necromantian. The Necromantian was an ancient Greek temple built in 
dedicated to the god and goddess of the underworld. The Necromantium was an ancient Greek temple built and dedicated to the god and goddess of the underworld, Hades and Persephone. According to tradition, it was located on the banks of Acheron River in Epirus, near the ancient city of Ephria. This site was believed to be the door to Hades, the realm of the dead. The word Necromantium means Oracle of the Dead, and the faithful came here to talk to their dead ancestors. Other temples were known to house oracles of the dead, but the Necromantium of Ephira was the most important. It belonged to the Thesprotians, the local Epirate Greek tribe, and they would participate in rituals involving elaborate ceremonies where they would seek to speak to the dead. The people would eat specific foods like pork, bread, and oysters, said to cleanse the body, and would proceed to sacrifice a sheep. And the faithful would descend through a series of meandering corridors, leaving offerings to the people as they passed through the iron gates. The celebrants would then witness the priest arise from the floor and fly throughout the temple, said to be possessed by the souls of the dead. The Necromantium was also described as the entrance by which Odysseus made his Nakia, which is the ancient Greek cult practice and is a rite by which ghosts were called up by the Greeks and questioned about the future. This temple was believed by many to be the final resting spot once they passed on and their bodies decayed into the earth. Their spirits were released and the Necromantium was the final resting place for the dead. Many locals and tourists come to try and communicate with the dead. There is an abundance of paranormal activity in this place, and it is known as an entryway to the underworld, and is one of the only direct channels on earth for the souls of the underworld to come and communicate with humans. In at number 3 we have Salem Mansion. The Salem Mansion is a dark, mysterious and eerie abandoned mansion located in Thessaloniki. The villa was designed in 1878 by Xenophon Paeonidis, who was known to be the most famous Greek architect in Thessaloniki. The mansion was bought in 1894 by Emmanuel Salem, who was the most important lawyer in the city and an eminent member of the Jewish community. It remained in the family for over 20 years and the family gave its famous name, the Salem Mansion. During World War I, the villa had changed hands after the Salem family left in 1915 and it became the consulate of the Austro-Hungarian Empire for more than half a century. In 1978, the mansion was damaged extensively by an earthquake that devastated Thessaloniki. To this day, the house still belongs to the Italian state but remains deserted. There have been many plans to restore the villa but for some reason it has yet to be done. This mansion is a very mysterious place and even just looking at it you can sense the fear and horror. There are many legends about the place and many paranormal investigators visit this infamous place to try and communicate with whatever horrific beings haunt the mansion. Many people speak of when they have visited the place, that they felt cold air around them even in the middle of summer, hearing doors close out of nowhere and hearing steps all throughout the house. Locals have mentioned that they stay away from the sinister house due to all the stories and sightings that have happened here. Many think it's cursed and stay as far away as they can. In 2013, the producers of the hit TV show and American Horror Story used a photo of the Salem Mansion for one of the posters promoting the new season because of its haunting appearance. None of the people working on the series ever mentioned the home being in Greece, and the series of the show Coven revolves around a group of witches and is set in New Orleans, so many believe this house is located in the United States. If you're brave enough to visit the Salem Mansion, you have to go all the way to Greece. In at number 2 we have Kontos Mansion. The Kontos Mansion was built in 1900 for Nicholas Kontos, who was the Russian consul for Greece and lived there with his wife and four children. The mansion is located beside the ocean in the small village of Anno Lahonia Pelion. Nicholas was one of the most powerful men in central Greece at the time and was widely known in the Fasala area, and they owned homes in other places like Volos and Athens. The popular urban legend that surrounds the house is that it's haunted after the death of the Kontos family, who was supposedly poisoned by a dead lizard that had fallen into a jug of milk. It was later found out that the children in the family died in their early teens of tuberculosis, but the urban legend is reinforced by the funerary monument in the cemetery of Volos, which presents a table with a decanter and three chairs around it, each inscribed with each name of the children and the age they passed, but they all said they all died at a very young age. No one really knows the truth, so the rumours of this cursed mansion continue to this day. Another legend believes that many war soldiers also haunt the mansion. During World War II, the mansion was occupied by the Nazis who used it as headquarters, where Greek warriors were interrogated and tortured. There were many Greeks who were tortured and executed in the villa's basement. This mysterious mansion has many different stories and these are reinforced because many other families who lived in the mansion after the Contos fell into a lot of misfortune, as well as people who worked on the home. Many of the past owners reported hearing spine-chilling screams and cries, causing none of them to stay too long. Some of the workers who helped renovate the villa never saw end results, as many of them unexpectedly died before finishing. Many locals tend to stay away from the 
the haunted mansion, but many tourists come to experience the haunting for themselves. But this mansion is one of many in Greece that have multiple ghost sightings inside and is truly terrifying. To this day, the Contos mansion stands empty and abandoned, which makes this place even scarier. And finally, in at number one, we have Villa Calagis. The Villa Calagis is located in the Rafina area of Attica, which was owned by Pericles Calagis, who was a very wealthy but disturbed man. The villa was named after him, and he stayed in the large mansion with his wife and family. The legend says that in 1910, Pericles took the life of his wife before taking his own life, and some versions tell the story of him taking the life of his whole family before taking his own life in the family home. So there are many stories of Pericles and his family haunting the home, and many have seen family members running around the home and hearing mysterious footsteps. During World War II, the home had been taken over by who used it to imprison and torture Greeks in the cellar, who many believe haunt the cellar to this day. Years later, while attempting to demolish the home, the bulldozer being used suddenly stopped working while approaching the house. And after two of the workers died from sudden heart attacks, all thoughts of knocking down the home were abandoned. Another popular legend regarding the haunted mansion is that Anao accepted a bet from his friend that he couldn't last a night in the famous haunted house. Well, he did last the night, but when his friend came in in the morning to check on his friend, he found him dead in the home. It said that nothing at all is able to grow for a few meters around the building. Experts who have investigated this phenomenon found that the atmosphere surrounding the house is uncommonly high in negative ions, something that is thought to be linked to paranormal activity. This haunted villa is among one of the most haunted in all of Greece and should be avoided. Number five on this list is the Pali Highway. This highway is super unique in how it's haunted and honestly really interesting. Quoting only in your state, they write, nowhere is there a higher concentration of varied ghost stories than along Ohio's beautiful and haunted Pali Highway. From ancient Hawaiian legends to major battle sites, the highway meanders through the Kualo Mountains between Honolulu and the Windward Coast, and it's one of the most ghastly places in all of Hawaii. It's said that Pele and the demigod Kamapua, a half man, half pig, had a bad breakup and agreed to never see each other again. Legend has it that you cannot take pork over the Pali Highway because it means that you're symbolically taking Kamapua from one side of the island to the other. If you try to bring pork across, your car will stop at some point along the journey and an old woman with a dog will appear. To continue along your way, you must feed the pork to the dog. Alright, so first, Hawaii is freaking awesome. I've done so many videos about so many haunted places, but never once have I heard a story about a haunted road where you need to feed pork to a dog. Like, shout out to our Hawaiian ghosts for switching things up. Also, the fact that this road symbolizes the breakup of two gods is pretty awesome. Pele, for those who don't know, is a Hawaiian deity of volcanoes and fire, and as the story tells us, Kamapua is a demigod in his own right. Now, as cool as this story is, I personally wouldn't want to be messing with the god of volcanoes or a half-pig, half-man superhuman, so if you do go down this road, do as the story says, and ditch the meat. Number four on this list is the Kaimuki House. Every place that's any place needs to have at least one haunted house, and this is Hawaii's. Only in your state once again writes, The famous haunted Kaimuki House, located on the corner of 8th and Harding on a foundation of two beds of lava rock, is known to many as one of the most haunted places on the island. The house itself looks relatively normal, but the story behind it is anything but. The creature said to reside in this house is a kasha, a man-eating ghost from Japanese folklore, and the stories surrounding its haunting of the Kaimuki house have been extensively documented. The original tale tells of a young couple who moved into the home and their neighbors who, upon hearing loud bangs and crashes, suspected domestic violence and called the police. When the police arrived, the couple claimed that they were being attacked by a force that they couldn't see. So guys, I did some research and looked into this Kasha creature, and this is really interesting. One, if it is a Kasha, then it's pretty far from home because they're said to reside in Japan. And two, this one functions slightly differently than a typical Kasha would. This creature is said to be a giant, grotesque-looking cat thing that runs on two legs and looks super mischievous. Typically, a Kasha will steal corpses of those who are already dead, specifically people who performed evil deeds in their life. Therefore, it's pretty uncommon for Akasha to actually attack people who are still alive, as the couple in our story reported. All this being said though, Kasha are considered to be servants of hell, so I'm not going to put anything past them. This house is the most haunted in all of Hawaii, and should be avoided at all costs. 
Number three on this list is Mackenzie State Recreation Area. It's honestly really too bad that this place is haunted because from what I've read, it's quite beautiful. 13 acres of lush Hawaiian nature by the water. Beautiful lookout spots, ironwood trees, but also a bunch of ghosts. Apparently this area has seen some horrible tragedies over the years. Murders and just other horrible things have taken place here and left their mark. The most famous story is of a couple who was recently engaged. They went out to this park and were staying overnight doing a little camping trip. For reasons unknown to the police, this couple was beaten to death and left there. This could have been by a person or it could have also been done by a demon. Their ghosts are certainly some of the most commonly spotted, but other apparitions are also seen occasionally. It should also be noted that just general scary things happen here on the daily. Screams coming from thin air, drastic changes in temperature, the feeling of a dark aura just hanging over top of you. All of this is part of the norm at this park. And like I said, it's really too bad that it had to be this way because in pictures, this area just looks freaking gorgeous. For obvious reasons though, I can't possibly recommend going here and I do advise you to stick to some of the other gorgeous spots Hawaii has to offer. Number two on this list is Kalihi Valley. The Kalihi Valley is honestly super beautiful and has some amazing natural terrain just like our park. I wouldn't want to go at nighttime though because if you do you may run into some night marchers. Legend says that the Hawaiian night marchers are a group of ghostly apparitions resembling ancient Hawaiian warriors. These warriors are heavily armed with spears and clubs and other archaic weapons and bang loud war drums as they march throughout the island. They appear at night with the goal of searching for their next fight and are fated to do this forever until they find it. These warriors were killed many, many years ago, but it's believed that a curse hangs over them and they're just forever going to walk this island until they can defend it one final time. The problem is that nobody's really coming to attack Hawaii these days and these warriors don't have any enemies to slay. Now, the sightings of these phantoms are honestly not as rare as you might think. Many longtime Hawaiian residents have reported having at least one encounter with the night marchers before with some tourists even saying that they've had run-ins with them. These people are kind of lucky to be living and telling the tale though because the scariest part about these night marchers is that your life could actually be on the line. It's widely believed that if you were to make direct eye contact with a night marcher then either you or someone you love is gonna suffer a very grim fate. The only way to save yourself if you happen to stumble upon these warriors is funny as it may seem, is to lie completely flat on the ground as a sign of respect. I personally don't really know why getting a face full of dirt pleases these ancient warriors, but apparently it does. If you are going to go check out this valley, then just make sure you do it during the daytime and avoid these night marchers altogether. And finally, number one on this list is Kaniana Cave. This cave has seen some things, man. Only in your state says once again, Kaniana Cave, a truly mysterious subject. This sinister story features Kamaholia, a shapeshifter who could transform himself from a shark into a man. He and his human wife gave birth to a son, Nanua. When the son discovered his taste for human flesh, like all man-eating sharks, he disguised himself as a human in order to trick his victims. He would drag his victims into the cave and eat them. In ancient times, the Hawaiian people were forbidden from entering the cave, fearful that they would be attacked and eaten by this shark man. When residents later found out about Nanua's true identity, that he was a shark man, they captured and killed him. Today, the souls of those who died here are said to haunt the area, and according to local storytellers, Kaniana Cave is a repository for psychic energy. This is one location you just won't want to visit at night in Hawaii, or alone, ever. So we got a shark into a man, into a sick killer with the souls of those who have died. No, 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 and another big no. This cave is just way too much for anyone to be going to. Hawaii is out here striking us again with the uniqueness, which I definitely thank them for, but this one is just far too much. I personally do not want to have to deal with the dead souls of those who were eaten by a shark man or possibly even run into the ghost of said shark demon thing. Kaniana Cave is 100% on the do not travel list and should probably just be boarded up by the sounds of it. 
In at number 5 we have Stocksness Beach. The Stocksness Beach is a popular sightseeing spot for locals and tourists to see and take pictures of the northern lights, but many people think that this beach is extremely haunted. It is located in the southeast coast of Iceland and has a stunning view with a massive mountain and beautiful black sand. A photographer, Eric Bennett, had an experience where he had stayed on the beach all night to wait for the lights to take pictures. He and his friend Matt were the only people there as the sun went down and the ocean tide came up and washed away all the footprints from the people during the day. They go to the car for a nap and at 11pm they wake up and find the northern light shining throughout the sky. They get out their tripods and cameras and start shooting. They were the only two people on the beach. When they looked down they saw mysterious footprints leading up to their tripod and then they just stopped. They were big defined wet footprints. They suddenly turned on their headlamps and no other footprints of humans were found in sight. Eric showed the photos he had taken of the footprints to Matt and he freaked out saying he had a strange feeling the entire night and wasn't able to nap because he felt like someone was standing outside of the car watching them. The two men stayed and tried to take more photos but they started hearing voices being carried around the beach by the wind. A dark and heavy feeling was weighing on them so they left immediately and as they drove away the heavy feeling started going away. Eric had told his story to a fellow traveller and the man had just finished a documentary about the haunted beach and that there have been many sightings by locals and tourists of a giant hairy man walking out of the ocean at night. This beach is also home to many shipwrecks over time and many believe that the souls that passed away from these wrecks still roam the beach to this day. In at number 4 we have Hivitvartan Lake. Hivitvartan Lake, otherwise known as White River Lake, is located in the highland on the Kajola Highland. Many icebergs surround the area and because of the glacial rivers the lake always looks a bit milky which contributes to the nickname. One of the many huts or travel lodges in the highlands that locals and tourists can stay in while in Iceland. There is one hut in particular that is rumoured to be haunted and it's the mountain hut at Hitvartnes nearby the lake. It's rumoured to be one of the most haunted places in Iceland. The hut was built by the Icelandic Touring Association in 1930 and there are many paranormal stories surrounding this hut since its inception. Many claim to see the ghost of a young lady dressed in grey in the hut. Many locals and guests claim to experience disturbances by the spirit and some have claimed to have seen her in one of the windows from outside when arriving late at night and then when entering the hut it was empty. A particular bed in the hut is believed to be unsafe and almost impossible to sleep in. Many people who have tried to sleep in the bed claim that they have been kicked out of the bed by force during the night and when they were woken up no one was around. It's said that this is a ghost of a young woman and it's her bed and she won't allow anyone to sleep in it, hence why people are forced out of the bed while sleeping. Many travelling in Iceland avoid staying in this hut but many paranormal investigators and ghost lovers visit to try and come in contact with the woman. In at number 3 we have Holobalagara Cemetery. There are many cemeteries around the world and many of them are haunted and that's also the case for the Holobalagora Cemetery. Cemetery. This cemetery is one of the most famous in Iceland and is often called the Old Churchyard. It opened in 1838 in Reykjavik and is the largest 19th century cemetery in all of Iceland and was replacing a previous burial ground used since the Viking times. The city placed the graveyard on a small hill a couple of blocks off the city central Pong. Some of Iceland's most famous people are buried here including John Sigerson, the father of Icelandic independence, Johannes Sveinsson Kajavel, Iceland's most famous painter and Ingeborg Bjarnason, the first woman member of Parliament. The graveyard also houses many of the victims of the 1918 Spanish influenza pandemic and a monument to French sailors who were lost at sea. In a country with minimal trees, the cemetery is covered. It's practically a forest which makes this resting ground that much more eerie. The graves are surrounded by willows, spruce, birch and rowan trees. Many come to pay respects to the legendary Icelandic buried here but many believe the old vikings previously buried here along with the influenza victims are the ones who haunt the living to this day. A videographer from New Zealand that films his travels visited Iceland and went to the cemetery during the night. And he claims to have caught orbs on camera that were floating in and around the gravestones. He had created an entire video of this finding and he was convinced that there was paranormal activity at this cemetery and he was thoroughly spooked during his time there. Many paranormal investigators and ghost hunters come to try and interact with these spirits. Locals and tourists who have visited the cemetery have seen spirits and have felt that they are being watched. Many believe the spirits often haunt the grounds at night time so if you're planning a trip to Iceland Iceland, I would avoid the cemetery, especially after the sun goes down. In at number 2 we have the priest's stone. Many people in Iceland and in the surrounding areas believe in and have many tales of elves, trolls and fairy people. One of the most famous tales is about haunted rock, where a kind and loving priest's spirit haunts and terrorises his love even after death and he still haunts the rock and the people who visit it. The story has been told for ages and are very well known among the people of Iceland. It took place in Hogajula, not far away from a town of Akuriai. The story has slightly changed over time 
and it's believed that it started on a stormy night before Christmas, when a priest's apprentice rode quite a distance to meet the woman he was in love with. On the way there, the weather was rough, and he drowned while crossing a raging river, and only his horse survived. His love, not knowing of his death, gets a visit the next evening. In the darkness, she believed that it was the priest's apprentice, and goes out with him on his horse. During the ride, the man's hat falls off, revealing it was a skeleton. She gains no peace from this ghost, who wants her to join him in death. She goes to a sorcerer for help, and he achieves putting the ghost to rest, but it was on unholy ground, right outside the graveyard at the country church at Mikra. The cursed stone is still believed to hold the lovesick priest's apprentice captive to this day, and the stone is still very visible. Due to this famous tale, many tourists and locals come to see the cursed rock, hoping to come in contact with the priest's apprentice's ghost. In at number one, we have Hofoy House. The most haunted place in all of Iceland is the Hofoy House. It is believed by locals and tourists to be the most haunted place. This home is located in the city of Reykjavik. It was built back in 1909 and sits on the waterfront just off Borgarten. This home was inspired by Nordic Art Nouveau and was constructed in Norway and shipped to Iceland. The Hofoy home has a haunting history. It was initially built for the French consul Jean Paul Boulogne in Iceland. Then it was sold to a judge and a poet in Einar Benningsen who claimed it was haunted by the ghost of a young woman often nicknamed the White Lady. The ghost is that of Solberg Johnstadir who had poisoned herself after Einar's verdict on a notorious case. At the home she would often appear at the night and haunt him and the owners of the home claim to hear strange noises and see the figure of a woman in the early hours of the morning. Other accounts believe that she had drowned or that the home was built on Viking burial site where the souls of the Vikings still roam the house and the land around it. This home is best known for in 1986 when former US President Ronald Reagan and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev where they discussed negotiations on military control and disarmament. The Hofoy has come to represent Iceland's diplomacy and the start of the of the Cold War. In 2015, a sculpture of Ina was made and is displayed outside the home. It has also housed many of the famous figures over the years, including Queen Elizabeth, Winston Churchill, and Marlene Dietrich. Nowadays, the Hofoy is owned by the city of Reykjavik and is currently used for official receptions and meetings, and it's not open to the public, but many locals and tourists flock to explore the home from the outside, hoping to come in contact with the ghost of Solberg. Coming in at number five is the Hospital of Colorno in Parma. It's considered to be one of the most haunted places in Italy. This is the asylum began in 1873 and was only used for psychiatric patients and later a hospital for the mentally ill. Later on, they had begun housing people like prostitutes, alcoholics, and even small children, deemed by society as dangerous. At first, only being a temporary situation for patients soon became their permanent home. Doctors and psychiatrists working performed experimental new treatments on the patients, like frontal lobotomies and electroshock therapy. Patients were locked away in small rooms, many forced to stay all day long like they were prisoners. Many getting very claustrophobic, and people have said they can see regarding his wife and daughters, and later took his own life inside of the house. After the Count's death, his brother had taken over the property and owned it until 1938 before it was left abandoned for the next two decades. Popular occultist Alistair Crowley had been rumored to spend some time at the home sometime in the 1920s. Fans and followers of Crowley soon began to visit the mansion, and some say they performed satanic rituals. A broken piano remains in the abandoned mansion, and visitors have claimed to hear it playing while they were there. Others also say ghosts roam the house to this day. Coming in at number three, Villa Magnoni. Next on the list is another abandoned house, the Villa Magnoni. And what makes this story even creepier is not much is known about this house, like who built it or why it has become abandoned. Many attempts to sell the house have failed time and time again. It's now owned by the University of Ferrara. They wanted to turn the villa into a research lab, yet to this day, nothing has been done about that. The events in the 1980s really turned this place into a very haunted attraction and gave it its infamous name of the Curse of Villa Magnoni. Four men went to check out the abandoned villa one day and claimed to hear children's voices in the distance. They ran towards it, but nothing was there. Instead, they saw an old woman behind one of the windows screaming. In 22, the island was turned into a mental hospital, bringing in even more tragedy to this already harrowing place. The doctor that ran the hospital conducted many brutal experiments on the patients on the island. He believed that mental illness could be treated and cured with lobotomies, using tools such as hammers, drills, and chisels to perform these experiments. Many say the doctor eventually went mad and took his own life by jumping off the bell tower. A nurse working witnessed this and 
stated that the doctor survived the fall but was choked to death by a mysterious mist. Somehow the mental hospital stayed open until 1968 before it was abandoned to this day. More than 160,000 victims were cremated on this island over the years and even today more than 50% of the soil on the island is made up of human ash. The island has remained untouched for decades and locals and tourists are banned from visiting. Even though the island doesn't allow tourists, many paranormal groups have filmed episodes about their findings on the island. The Ghost Adventures crew spent 24 hours on the island and they experienced many things such as creepy music, weird energy, unexplainable equipment malfunctions and when using their ghost monitors, they flew off the charts. Needless to say, this is one of the most, if not the most creepy and haunted place in Italy, if not the world. Number 5 on this list is Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima is one of the many Bonin islands that is located in the Pacific Ocean, pretty far away from the Japanese mainland. There are actually several reasons why you should never visit this island aside from the fact that it's haunted. This island was the location of some very important battles in World War II fought between the United States and the Japanese. This island currently houses a Japanese military base of self defense on it and things were not that much different in World War II. The battle that the Japanese and the Americans had lasted for 40 days and thousands of troops died brutal deaths on its shores. The current troops who are stationed here have reported sightings of ghostly apparitions that look to be in World War II outfits. These are apparently the dead soldiers from all those years ago. Their souls have yet to leave this island and are rumored to be forever marching along its shores. Like I said before though, this haunting isn't the only reason you shouldn't go here. For starters, it's a military base of self defense now and completely closed off to the public. If you were to go, then at the very least you'd be arrested for trespassing. You also shouldn't visit this place because it houses Mount Suribachi. Mount Suribachi is a 161 meter tall volcano that is currently considered to be the most dangerous volcano on the planet. It isn't as big as Yellowstone by any means, but it is far more active and people believe that it is likely to erupt in the next 100 years. This would be extremely detrimental for the people on the island, but would also cause massive tidal waves that could end up killing thousands on the shores of Japan and China. This coupled with the military base, coupled with the fact that undead World War II spirits still roam the grounds, makes this place a hard pass for me. Number 4 on this list is the Whispering Tunnel. The Whispering Tunnel is honestly kind of scary as it is, a long thin tunnel that is super dark and doesn't look very well kept. The scare factor is multiplied exponentially though when you throw in the fact that there's a ghost who's haunting it. Now there are multiple stories associated with this tunnel, the two biggest ones involving a murder. One story depicts the tale of a young girl who was brutally murdered as she was passing through the tunnel and now her spirit is said to haunt the tunnel. The other story talks about how a group of sick teenagers murdered a 21 year old in the tunnel by by burning him and leaving his remains there to be found later. There are also some ties to some ancient Buddhist monks who believe this area was simply a hot spot for spirits and all things paranormal. It's possible that none of these things are true, but it's also possible that all of them happened and with the reports of the ongoings in this tunnel, I tend to lean to the latter. People who pass through this tunnel often don't make it to the end. Now that's not because the spirits have murdered them or taken over their soul or anything like that, but they've reported saying that they just can't force themselves to make it through. There have been countless reports of a serious foreboding presence the further you go into the tunnel. As if the air gets thick with a dark spirit and your innate senses tell you to stay away. It's also been said that people have felt the sensation of being pushed or pulled before typically in the direction of where they entered. Also, considering this is called the whispering tunnel, there have obviously been reports of whispers and scratches. These whispers often sound like those of a little girl further pushing the narrative that a girl has been murdered here. Truly a terrifying tunnel that probably isn't worth the scary walkthrough. Number 3 on this list is Camp Hansen. The legend associated with Camp Hansen is also sometimes referred to as the Lone Soldier. Camp Hansen is a United States Marine military base that is located in Okinawa. The camp currently has over 6,000 American troops stationed there to this day. It should also be noted that this was an area of interest in World War II, similarly to our other entry of the island of Iwo Jima, and saw its fair share of death. One soldier's soul seems to have clung onto this place though, and doesn't seem to want to leave. The camp has several gates to get inside, but the one under particular scrutiny here is gate 3. It's at this gate that the ghost of a dead World War II soldier will appear. It's said that he will show himself to you and be wearing a World War II outfit that is covered in blood, seemingly the outfit that he died in. He will approach you and ask you for a cigarette, and then if you give it to him, quietly smoke alongside you until he's done. From my research, this ghost isn't evil in nature and doesn't want to harm you, he simply wants a smoke. But soldiers that got positioned at this gate started to get extremely creeped out. So much so that the gate has actually been 
been shut down and is no longer in service. The amount of stories that people have compiled about sightings and interactions with this ghost was so much that the people who run the base thought it was best to leave the man be and just shut the gate down for good. This camp, and more specifically the gate, is considered by most to be one of the most haunted places in all of Japan. Number two on this list is the Roundhouse Schoolhouse. Now, the Roundhouse Schoolhouse is an abandoned schoolhouse in Japan that was constructed in a perfect circle. The exterior of the building looks super eerie, and the fact that desks and school supplies still remain inside of it, it adds to the overall creepiness. The schoolhouse was built back in 1906 and operated as any schoolhouse would until 1970 when it closed down for economic reasons. Now, what's interesting about this school and the hauntings that are associated to it is that there doesn't seem to be any big inciting incident to cause ghosts to take up residence here. Typically, we hear something about a murder or a something of that nature that caused a spirit to haunt that particular place. This schoolhouse doesn't have any of that. It was a regular school right up until it closed. However, that didn't stop ghosts and demons from calling it home after people left it behind. Rumors started circulating about this place and how people who stumbled upon it had heard screams or seen ghostly apparitions looking down on them from the windows. Soon it became a spot of interest to people seeking a paranormal thrill, but these thrill seekers were met with something that they weren't prepared for. People started going and when they came back, it was as if they'd been through a battle. They were shell shocked. They told tales of how they felt frozen where they stood and how it felt as demons were invading their thoughts when they were there. Some people who went there came back on the verge of complete insanity as if their mind had been pushed to a place of no return. It seems like this place is host to a plethora of ghosts and demons, and I wouldn't recommend going there unless your mind is up to the task. Number 5 on this list is the Island of Dolls. This place has got to be one of the creepiest spots on the entire planet if you ask me. Located in the canals near Mexico City, the Island of Dolls got its name from the residents that live in the trees. If you hadn't guessed already, those residents are creepy looking dolls. They weren't the only ones living here in the past though. The haunting of this island is deeply tied with a man named Don Julian Santana Barrera. In the mid 20th century, Don Julian was living with his wife and children in Mexico City, however for reasons unknown to us, he decided to leave his family and isolate himself on an island in Teixulo Lake. He was completely alone on this island until he made a chilling discovery. The body of a young girl had washed ashore and it was clear that she had drowned in this lake far earlier. This shook Don Julian to his core and his already fragile mind was tested even more. Now it's rumored that he believed the spirit of this girl was talking to him, that her ghost was haunting the island and that she had a mission for him to accomplish. So when a doll floated through the lake and found its way onto the island a little bit after her body had been found, it fit into this narrative perfectly. Don Julian believed that the ghost of this girl could only be appeased if he took this doll and hung it from a tree on his island. He went and did this, but then his obsession for these dolls grew. Whether he was truly being haunted by this ghostly spirit or his mind had deteriorated to a point of no return is unknown, but we do know that he dedicated the next 50 years of his life to filling this island with dolls. Dolls that he found in the canals, in the garbage on the streets. Sometimes they were missing limbs or there was only a head left of them, but it didn't matter to Don Julian. He would still hang them regardless. Nowadays, the island is filled with thousands of dolls who look like they've seen far better days. What caps this story off and made its legend ripple through Mexican lore is the manner in which our island keeper died. Drowning in Teixulo Lake exactly how the young girl had done so 50 years earlier. Today it is believed that his spirit along with the young girls remain on this island. Locals say if you were to visit this place you must bring a doll of your own or else the spirit of Don Julian will haunt you even after you leave. Number 4 on this list is the House of Mummies. The House of Mummies is a small museum that is home to a plethora of mummies. What makes this place so interesting is that no one intended for these bodies to be mummified. Guanajuato, where this museum is located, has a very unique climate and soil. In 1833, that region was going through a bad outbreak of disease and there were a lot of deaths. Some of the bodies that were buried during this time were later found to have been naturally mummified or had mummified themselves. People were fascinated and took them to a specific building which later has been transformed into a museum. Now there's a lot of lore surrounding these bodies, but the general consensus is that there is still a bit of life to these mummies. People have reported feeling their living presence when they go and visit this museum. They've also said that they have felt them watching them as they go through or have noticed their bodies turn to look at them. It truly sounds like something straight out of a 
Scooby Doo book, but then again, so does natural mummification. Locals even say that they believe some of the mummies sneak out of this museum sometimes and cause trouble in the night when nobody's looking. Number three on this list is Claudia Mirangro's house. Claudia was a woman with a decently easy life who had inherited a reasonable amount of money from her parents passing. When she was younger she got married and she and her husband bought a home in the city of Queretaro. It was at this residence that they had their three children. Alfredo was the youngest, Anna was the middle child, and Claudia, named after her mother, was the eldest. Apparently the family had some happy years living there, but that didn't last forever. Claudia Marangros' mental state started to decline and she went down a bit of a rabbit hole. It got to a point where her husband could no longer stand his wife and he left her and the kids. Poor idea to leave the children in the hands of this woman though. On April 24th, 1989, the voices in her head got far too loud. She was convinced that she was possessed by a demon and that everyone in the city that they were living had turned into spirits. Her madness reached a point of no return and as the voices beckoned her to do so, she grabbed the knife and went into her children's room, killing them one by one. Hours later, the police were called due to somebody reporting heavy crying. They found the mother covered in blood, mumbling to herself, clutching a bloody knife on the floor. She apparently doesn't remember the incident at all and wholeheartedly believes that a demon was controlling her actions. Claudia went to jail for a long time and is still there to this day, but her children's spirits, they didn't go anywhere. People have reported hearing screams and shrieks coming from that home. The pitter patter of tiny childlike feet running through it. Someone even reported seeing what looked to be a demon child staring at them through the windows. A death like that from a demon possessed mother has made this home one of the most haunted places in Mexico. Number two on this list is La Posada de Sol. La Posada de Sol is a hotel that is located in the center of Mexico City. Calling it a hotel is a little bit of a stretch though because at this point it is completely out of commission, covered in graffiti and a shell of its former self. Even though the exterior of this building has seen far better days, the inside still boasts incredible architecture, making people wonder what could have been. With over 600 rooms, a casino, a theater, a human sized chessboard, galleries and much more, this place had aspirations of being the finest hotel in Mexico. That dream was never fully reached though as construction of the hotel was never finished and had to be halted in 1945. Fernando Saldana Galvin was the man behind this unfinished beauty. He envisioned this hotel to be a centerpiece of Mexico City, a place that people would flock to from around the world, a true beauty that would stand the test of time. Because of this he poured his blood, sweat and tears into this place. Problem is that a hotel of this caliber doesn't get made with blood, sweat or tears. It gets made with money. In 1945 the hotel's construction was stopped because Fernando's debt was insurmountable. The stress and anxiety of never finishing his hotel and not being able to pay off his bills got the better of him and he hung himself in the hotel yard. After his death rumors began to sprout about the true intentions of this hotel. Some people stating that Fernando was actually part of a cult and this site was meant to be used as a place for satanic rituals. Other unfounded rumors surfaced that Fernando had actually killed his wife and kids before taking his own life. One thing is certain though, he definitely left this hotel haunted after he died and not just by his spirit either. A girl was said to have been murdered in the basement at this hotel in its early days and her spirit still haunts the walls as well. There's an altar in one of the top rooms of this place that people say you must leave candy on. If you don't, then you will be haunted by her undead spirit even after you leave. Number one on this list is Santa Paula Cemetery. The Santa Paula Cemetery is located in Guadalajara. The initial purpose of the cemetery was to be a spot designated for those who died of influenza and other epidemics that were ravaging Mexico. In the many years that it's been active though, lore surrounding the spirits that could be potentially living there has exploded. One of its most notable spirits is that of a young boy who died when he was 10 years old. The boy's name was Nachito and he died over a century ago in 1882. One evening a massive storm was sweeping through Guadalajara. This was a problem for Nachito though because he was deathly afraid of the dark, so much so that he had to have two torches lit outside of his window every evening. That night when his parents sent him to sleep though, the torches went out due to the storm and the next morning when his parents came to wake him, they found him dead where he slept. The cause of his death was a heart attack and it was confirmed that Nachito got so scared of the dark that he had caused himself to have a heart attack and died. They had the funeral shortly after and buried him in the ground, but the next morning when his grieving mother came to visit him, 
the coffin had been taken out of the ground. His body was still inside the coffin so they buried him again except the same thing happened. In fact they repeated this process 9 times before realizing that he can't be buried underground because he is too scared of the dark. Therefore they made a special above ground stone coffin that would always have access to the light. However it is said that even though this coffin was made his spirit still haunts the area. Another famous story about this cemetery is in regards to a vampire. Locals say that a vampire was killed by some people who drove a stake through its heart and then buried the body at this cemetery. A while later the stone marking that had indicated where the vampire had been buried was cracked and a tree was growing through it. They say that if that tree ever dies the vampire will return and seek vengeance on the people in surrounding areas. This is so rooted in the lore there that they've even built a fence around this tree so no one can come in and wreck it. There are a bunch more stories of how haunted this cemetery is with sightings of demons and ghosts that I sadly do not have time to cover in this video, but I highly recommend looking this place up if you want to scare. Number 5 on this list is Larnock Castle. New Zealand isn't like a lot of European countries with tons of castles. In fact, as far as castles go, they hardly have that many at all. That's why it kind of sucks that one of their only ones and one of the most beautiful just has to be haunted. Travel Triangle writes, One of the spookiest places in New Zealand, the Larnack Castle, is famous for being one of the few castles in the country. The story goes as follows. The castle's ballroom was gifted by Larnack to his daughter, Katie, on her 21st birthday. Unfortunately, she died young due to typhoid cancer. His first two wives also died while in this castle, and he himself took his own life after learning of his son's and his third wife's affair. Later, the castle was also a mental hospital during the World Wars. While Katie is seen swirling in the ballroom, he too has been spotted roaming around the corridors. Instances of people being pushed, touched on the back, and others have all been reported. Well, that is just all kinds of messed up, guys. Why couldn't this have been the last season of Game of Thrones instead of what we did get? We got disease, affairs, multiple wives, people taking their own life, and then on top of all of that, this castle was literally used as a mental hospital during the World Wars. I truly cannot think of a history that would have made a place more haunted than that. Apparently the ghost of the father who killed himself is often spotted at this location. He'll appear to visitors and will moan and cry to them, seemingly regretting his decision. Some people have also spotted a ghoul-like creature that looks a little bit like the Joker. It's in a straitjacket and has this menacing smile that looks sinister but also gives you the feeling that this creature isn't in control of its actions. It's really too bad that this is the reality of Larnet Castle because I looked at some photos and from the outside, it's pretty cool. Even though it looks really nice, I can't in good conscience recommend that you go here though. Number 4 on this list is the Puhini Homestead. This homestead is located in the Howick Historical Village which was built in 1861 but then moved to where it sits now in 1982. News Hub writes, Over the years there have been sightings of a woman in white ascending the stairs. Footsteps have been heard from the halls with no one around to make them and the sound of objects being dragged across the floor has reportedly echoed through the empty walls. Wallbank stayed overnight in the homestead to try and see whatever was going on in the night for himself. He says there was a feeling of being watched but it didn't make him feel afraid. As the night alone in the old building progressed there were sounds he couldn't explain. Scuffing sounds and swishes. It's like there's something just around that corner he wrote in a journal at the time. Hiding or doing something. I'm thinking of a rat but I can't see one. At around 3am Wallbank heard a bang as though something had fallen over. Turns out the torch he had set up on a chair upstairs had fallen or been knocked over. Footage shows the torch flying down the stairs as though it had been thrown. But there's no camera on the torch itself so just how it moved like that is still a mystery. Video footage of the stairs doesn't show much, just a slight shadow maybe. But it's the audio that's odd. Loud noises that sound like a cabinet being dragged across the floor. A series of footsteps and several loud clanking noises similar to that made by a metal bucket. Whenever ghosts or paranormal beings have the ability to move physical objects, the stakes they get raised a lot. Think about it, if that torch just so happened to land on something flammable and Wallbank wasn't there to hear it right away, then that entire house could have gone up with him in it. Ghosts like this are dangerous and have no care for human life. Why this ghost is here or why they're pissed off at humans is a mystery as well. Maybe if we knew that then we could at least do something to appease it, but we can't. 
Once again, this is the case of a spot in New Zealand that for whatever reason is just deeply haunted. Number three on this list is the Napier Prison. Napier Prison is the oldest jail in the country dating all the way back to 1862. The prison shut down its activities in 1993, but that was after 130 years of reluctant guests staying here and doing enough damage to cause it to become seriously haunted. Like most jails back then, there were some serious injustices that took place here. The prisoners were treated brutally. They could be tortured, beaten, or in some cases even killed. There's an area of the prison called the Hanging Yard, and I think you can probably imagine what happened there based on the name. This prison also housed some of the hardest criminals in New Zealand. Granted, it also housed some people who did some petty crimes too, and some who were even just generally innocent. The dark history and the numerous human rights violations that went down here have left their mark for sure. The first thing that goes is technology. Those who go here say that cell phones stop working, cameras have a hard time capturing images, and if they brought a computer, then that's as good as useless. Then you get hit with the shadows. What is a brightly lit room all of a sudden just gets filled with darkness from literally nowhere. How it got there is anyone's guess. And last is the faces. Disembodied faces show up in this dark haze and either speak to visitors or attack them. Sometimes they'll come straight out of the walls and sometimes they'll just appear in front of you. As cool as it would be to talk to a floating head, I don't think I want to risk the mental trauma that I'd have after seeing that, so I recommend avoiding this jail altogether. Number two on this list is Waitomo Caves Hotel. Every country's got one. One hotel that has, through its time of being active, seen one too many tragedies to just be a normal hotel. Some hotels have it worse than others though, and this one is definitely top tier when it comes to hauntings. News Hub says, originally called Waitomo House, the hotel is said to teem with ghostly activity. Bathtubs drip with blood, spirits walk straight through guests, and those brave enough to stay the night could feel something jump on them or pull their bedsheets away. Wallbank told News Hub the stories of the hotels were intense. We heard stories from the people there, even if management didn't admit it, he said. A staff member said that she went into one of the rooms to clean it, and the bathtub was just filled with what she said looked like blood. She ran out to get another person to look, but when they came back, it was completely clear, he said. People just don't make things like that up. Wallbank and his haunted Auckland team, accompanied by the Wellington Strange Occurrences Society, were brave enough to stay the night. They say a slew of uncomfortable experiences followed them. Sinking feelings, like when you go over a bump in the road were felt. A ball of light passed straight through one of the investigators and multiple people felt as though they were being watched. Unexplained whispers were captured using voice recording technology and one of the investigators claimed to have seen a dark shadow streak across a hallway. So this is just a big fat no for me guys. If I'm going to a hotel, then I want to be calm. I want to be relaxed. I want to get to my room and see a nice little chocolate chilling on my pillow with the bed made. I want to order room service and then have one too many mimosas at brunch. What I don't want is to be fearing for my freaking life from some shadow demon. I also like to take the occasional warm bath, and doing so in a pool of blood is not my idea of a relaxing time. I tried to find out why this hotel is this way, like what could have possibly happened to it to cause such a horrible haunting, but there actually wasn't anything. From my research, it doesn't look like anything tragic of major significance occurred here. This place is just generally haunted and just should be avoided at all costs. Number one on this list is Camp Adair. Camp Adair was first established in 1913 and has over 100 acres of land attached to it. It's your typical camp environment and provides a bunch of outdoor and environmental activities for those who want to come and be a part of it. It's a popular location for school trips and overnight stays. Sadly, it was during one of these school trips that a horrible tragedy occurred. There was a group of children who stayed at this camp many years ago. While they were there, something came over their teacher. A soft and a very kind man, by all accounts, totally lost his mind. During the night, whilst everyone was asleep, this teacher woke up. Instead of go to the bathroom or get some water, like most of us do in the night, he instead decided to kill every single one of the students that were with him before ultimately taking his own life as well. Nobody knows why he did this, what changed in his demeanor to have him commit such an atrocity, but they do know that his ghost has never left. Still as mad as the last day that he was alive, this ghost wanders the grounds now and is in search of another victim. 
The one super noticeable feature about him is his bright red beard. Whenever students come to this camp, they are immediately told that if they ever see someone with a red beard, just run in the other direction. Number five on this list is Kachini Castle. Kachini Castle was a castle built in the 13th century in South Central Poland. This castle was host to many battles over the years until it ultimately fell in the 18th century. Many Polish kings lived in this castle, at least at one point of their reign, and at one point it was rather marvelous. Now it's a ruin of its former self and still haunted by a ghost of a past royal. Queen Bona Sforza lived a very interesting and lavish lifestyle for someone in the 1500s. She was initially born in Milan to a very wealthy and powerful Italian family. This family's influence was vast and many powerful people wanted to wed Bona Sforza. Eventually, Polish King Sigismund, nicknamed the Old, was the selected suitor and the pair got married. This made Bona Sforza Queen Bona Sforza of Poland. It's the ghost of this Polish queen that is said to haunt the castle walls to this day though. A lady in white that floats through the walls of the ruined castle searching for something. Or at least that's what people have reported when they've seen her. They say that her ghost looks as if she's trying to find something that she lost. That her ghost looks extremely troubled and distraught. This all stems back to the legend of what happened when she was alive. The manner of her death is hazy at best, but whilst she was living, it's believed that Queen Bona Sforza hid a bundle of treasure somewhere around this castle. Many people think it was beneath the river near the castle, whilst others believe it's underneath the castle itself. Either way, now her soul continually wanders the grounds searching for this treasure as if finding it will release her from this purgatory state. From the reports that I read, many people don't think that she is dangerous, which is a good thing, but they have noted feeling very sad around this castle. Some people have said that after visiting said castle, it felt as if a cloud of depression hung over them for several months after the fact. Potentially the same feeling the soul of Queen Bona Sforza has all the time. Number four on this list is the Skull Chapel of Kazurmna. This is one of the creepiest spots in Europe, if you ask me. This is a Polish church that was built in 1776 to 1804 by Father Wokla Tomaszek. When he first started building this church, he got hit with a pretty unsettling surprise. Digging into the ground, he discovered bones, and then more bones, and then more bones after that. Thousands of dead remains littered the area right underneath his feet where his church was being built. This didn't stop him though, in fact, it only inspired him. He got the local undertaker and then they collectively worked on digging up every single remain that they could find. They learned that these dead bodies were from a mass grave that was put there during the Thirty Years War which happened over a century prior. After cleaning off all of the dead skulls and bones, the father took them and hung them all throughout his church. Now you have this incredibly eerie room with over 3,000 skulls and bones hanging down from the walls. Obviously a location like this has sparked some rumors of a haunting over the past years. People believe that the spirits of the dead soldiers were angered that their grave was disturbed and now their spirits haunt the church. Reports of incredible uneasiness is said to be felt by most people that enter this space and stay there for a while. Honestly though, I'm not sure if this is indicative of a haunting in this case. Pretty sure anyone would feel uneasy if they were standing in the middle of 3,000 dead skulls that were all staring down at them. Number three on this list is Mount Sleza. Mount Sleza is a Polish mountain in the Sudeten Forland, southern Poland. This mountain has an incredible amount of lore and history connected to it. There's a great article detailing the power connected to this mountain called Psychic Haunting Mount Sleza, written by a man named Nathan, and I'm going to quote his article now. The truth is that Sleza is an ancient ritual site of local Celtic culture later on used by other pagan societies before Christianity came. Over hundreds of years, the place filled with positive spiritual energies, and for this day, these energies can be sensed. It's also a haunted place, but not by some ghosts and apparitions, but by real spirits, and I'm talking about spirits that were never human. Some people call these entities the spirits of nature. In any case, these are the spirits of the mountain. They protect it, and they help people in their spiritual pursuits. As spirits of this sort, they can be very helpful, but also very dangerous if you fail to show them proper respect. Unfortunately, a lot of tourists fail to show this kind of respect by leaving rubbish on tourist routes or even by sitting on cult sculptures. Don't do this no matter what kind of sacred place you're visiting. You wouldn't sit down on a crucifix if you're Christian, would you? So that's the history of this mountain and how it's come to be haunted by some ancient spirits. 
Now the good thing about this mountain is if you ever do decide to go, you don't need to be haunted. If you walk in and you show these ancient spirits respect, then you may even receive a good vision from them. This place will basically give you back what you put into it, so if you do decide to go, then approach it seriously and you should be fine. Number two on this list is Chaka Castle. This is another Polish castle that was built in the 13th century, but this one is far more haunted than the last. We currently don't know exactly what the initial castle would have looked like because in 1909, it was rebuilt to resemble the style of the 18th century. It's a very beautiful castle and located right next to a river with incredible scenery. This castle is absolutely riddled with ghosts though. The first ghosts to mention and the ones that you would interact with first if you were to visit this castle is a group of dead that lie at the bottom of the river. Back in 1719, as a funeral was taking place, people were walking the casket over the castle bridge. That bridge collapsed into the river and several of the people who fell in drowned. It's been reported by many people going to this castle that the screams of those who drowned can still be heard as you walk over said bridge. The scariest part is that their screams aren't the loudest ones there. A woman's cries for help are the ones that can be heard the most when passing over this bridge, and it's believed that those cries belong to Joachim von Nitz's wife. Joachim was one of the owners of this castle during its history, and what he's remembered for at this location is rather brutal. His wife had an affair and got pregnant with another man's child. Joachim felt exceptionally betrayed and hurt, so he responded by drowning his wife in that river. This wasn't enough for him though because he actually allowed her to give birth, and then as she watched, he took her newborn child and bricked it up in the chimney. This is why when people pass by the chimney in this castle, the screaming of a newborn can be heard ringing throughout. Believe it or not though, there's still another ghost that haunts this place. This woman's name was Gertrude and she lived at this place before any of the other ghosts did. One evening she got in a heated argument with her brother. This sparked her inevitable betrayal where she set an army upon this castle. They didn't conquer the castle though and she was found out. Her brother held nothing back and beheaded her for her actions whilst also cursing her in the process. Now her spirit is cursed to live in this castle forever. For anybody that's counting, that makes four separate ghosts that live at this castle. Certainly not a spot that I would recommend visiting. Number one on this list is the Rice Complex. The Rice Complex is a massive underground city with a connection of tunnels that is located inside the Owl Mountains. This was a project that the Germans started in World War II in 1943. Now, the exact purpose behind this project is currently unknown, however most assume that it was going to act as a secret German military defense base. It was never fully finished with about only half of the project getting constructed, but if it ever was fully constructed then capturing it would have been extremely difficult considering it would have been impossible to bomb as it's located in a mountain and physically storming up said mountain to take it would have proven even more challenging. Even though Though it's only half finished, there was still a massive amount of infrastructural work done on this project. It's estimated that 257,000 cubic meters of reinforced concrete was brought into these tunnels during the two years it was under construction. It's also believed that some of the tunnels and pathways haven't even been discovered yet. This is partly because some of the tunnels have flooded over the years, but frankly, it could be a blessing in disguise as they're said to be very haunted. Now, I don't think I need to describe in detail some of the brutalities that the Germans committed during World War II. We're all aware of how abhorrent some of those actions were. The construction of this project, it was no exception. Many of the prisoners who were forced to work on this complex were either killed or died from being overworked. Lots of people lost their lives far too soon and it's really sad to think about. The people who have been in these tunnels have said that all of that brutality left its mark. Some of the souls of those who died here still haunt it to this day. People have reported seeing ghostly apparitions wandering through the tunnels and these sounds of hard labor reverberating throughout. I'm not actually even sure if you can visit this place but I wouldn't recommend going even if you could. Number five on this list is the Devil's Precipice. The Devil's Precipice is located in the village of Cosmonel and is definitely one of the cooler entries on this list in my opinion. The Devil's Precipice is basically one big dangerous treasure hunt. The legend says that bandits hid some very valuable treasure here hundreds of years ago after they pulled off a massive heist. They didn't just leave it here though, but they actually cursed the treasure in the area around it so that the only people who could ever get it 
would be them. This was many, many years ago, and since then, this curse has made it impossible for those who are hunting this treasure to ever actually find it. It's said that this area can be haunted by a bunch of different things, and your experience searching for this treasure differs from person to person. It's not uncommon, though, for those seeking this treasure to completely lose their minds. Apparently, these people won't even be able to fully describe their experience after they finished, but their brains will just have gone to complete mush, and they're just a shell of their former selves. Some people are lucky enough to not get this fate but instead come face to face with some bull-like demons. The body of a human with the head of a bull. These creatures are said to guard the treasure and will stop at nothing to keep you from taking it. The luckiest people don't need to deal with either of these things though and instead just get wildly confused and lost. When someone is approaching the treasure, it's said that a spell will be cast on them. They'll blink and then they'll find themselves many kilometers away from where they previously were. Their bodies just go into this trance-like state and they completely lose all sense of direction just walking aimlessly through the woods. Oftentimes when they're found, they're completely covered in scratch marks and have no idea what happened to them. The lure of buried treasure is appealing, but it's clear that this is a treasure that just simply doesn't want to be found and it's going to do anything to stop you from getting it. Number four on this list is the Chiagna Monastery. Built in 1780, this monastery is located outside the capital city of Romania. Even though Romanians back in the day spent a long time building this place, it was never really used for anything. It was never properly blessed or consecrated and because of that it's been host to a series of unfortunate events it is now the site of paranormal activity. Only 10 years after it was built Turkish troops came in and raided it. During the raid they set a fire in this building and everything burned but the building still stood. Then several years later the building and those who were in it got hit with a massive outbreak of the plague and if that wasn't bad enough the building was also hit later with a massive earthquake which caused the bell tower to collapse and the bell was drawn away by a nearby by river. The fact that there's any building left standing at all is actually kind of a marvel, but due to its history, locals say it's super haunted. People warn you of going to this place because if you do, it's said that you'll get hit with some horrible luck. There have also been sightings of very sickly individuals, assumingly victims of the plague outbreak that happened many years ago. The most common paranormal experience at this place though is the ringing of a bell. The same bell that fell off so many years ago will ring out when there's a full moon in the sky. Honestly, the ringing of a bell isn't too bad and would actually be pretty cool to experience if it was a full moon, but if you do decide to go, then I recommend keeping your distance. You don't want to get a slew of bad luck following you around just so you could hear this one ghost bell. Number three on this list is Giamana. Giamana is currently an abandoned Romanian village that isn't doing too hot right now. Everything about this town was nice and quaint until in 1978 when its world got turned upside down. Communist ruler at the time, Nicolae Ceasescu, decided that he wanted to exploit a massive reserve for copper that was close to the village. This copper mine produced incredible amounts of copper and was extremely profitable, but it was at the expense of these villagers. Mining copper creates a lot of waste. Waste that you can't just put anywhere. Well, the dictator decided that the perfect spot was the village of Giamana. All the local villagers were ousted from their homes and sent over 100 kilometers away and given little compensation for their houses and their trouble. Then their homes and their village was swallowed up by a sea of toxic waste that's literally still here to this day. Nowadays, you can only see the top of the church poking its head out of this dangerous lake of poison. Before the villagers left, it's said that they put a curse on this land. Those with ill intentions will feel the effects of despair and loneliness forever. They'll feel like an outcast from their homes, from society, and from their family and friends. It's said that they wanted to make those who came to this place with ill intentions feel how they felt when they had to leave their homes and go to a completely new place with no warning make them feel like they don't belong and they're a burden on those around them. This feeling is echoed by those who visited this place and locals say that if you do want to see this in person, to make sure that your intentions are nothing but kind and gentle. Factor in a whole other reason why you shouldn't go to this place, but it's literally because it's a giant lake of toxic waste and I'm just guessing here, but I imagine that that's not ideal to be breathing in. Number two on this list is Dracula's Castle. This wouldn't be a complete list if I didn't bring up Romania's most famous fictional character and his residence. The castle, also known as Brand Castle, is located in Transylvania, which is also in Romania. It shares a shocking resemblance to Dracula's castle in Bram Stoker's classic novel. Dracula being a vampire would walk around his castle walls by himself, occasionally coming out at nighttime to feast on human victims or turn them into other vampires. The character of Dracula is often associated with Vlad the Impaler, and even though Vlad didn't spend too much of his time at this castle, it's believed that this castle is the 
inspiration for Dracula's home. Now I should note that this castle probably isn't actually haunted. Unlike the other entries on this list, this castle isn't known for having horrible atrocities take place inside its walls. The horrible tragedies that occurred all took place within someone's mind and then that person wrote them on a page for all of us to envision. Therefore, in all honesty, I'm kind of breaking the rules a little bit with this entry because I do think that you should go and visit Dracula's castle. There aren't actual ghosts there, so you're not risking any harm befalling you and you get to literally walk through the walls imagining Dracula doing the same thing. They have a restaurant by this castle, they have tons of events there, and they even throw the occasional party. On Halloween, you can go there for a special event and celebrate in Dracula's literal castle. I actually don't think I can come up with a cooler place to celebrate Halloween on Earth than in Dracula's castle, but if you guys can, then comment it down below. However, I don't know what it's gonna take to beat out Dracula's literal home. So, number one on this list is Corvin Castle. Corvin Castle, even though it wasn't written as Dracula's castle, honestly should have been. This is a castle in Romania that has seen its fair share of horrors and it's deeply haunted because of it. This castle has had tons of horror stories over the years. One of them says that Vlad the Impaler was actually held captive here for seven years in the dungeons. That he lived off of rats and he impaled them after he'd eaten them. That his deep desire for blood and death rose as he was trapped between these walls. Another legend talks of three Turkish prisoners who were promised freedom if they dug a 100 foot deep well. The prisoners did this and it took them over 15 years to accomplish the project, but when they were finished, were mercilessly thrown back into their cells and tortured. This castle even has a bear pit in the dungeons. It's said that those who were sentenced to death would be taken and thrown into this bear pit with a hungry bear inside and mauled to death by the animal. Horrific torture devices have been found in this castle and other dark sadistic things that have made it one of the most haunted spots in all of Romania. Now due to all this violence, there are several curses and hauntings that hang over this place. The first one is the well. Locals warn to never drink from that well and also if you visit this castle, throw a coin down there and say a prayer. The three Turkish prisoners who dug it cursed it before they died and made it so that bad things will come to those who drink the water. The second is a monk. There was a monk who was staying in this castle who was caught eavesdropping on a conversation between two people. He was taken outside and bricked until he died. His spirit still roams around the halls of this building to this day with some people reportedly having conversations with him before. Several other people have seen ghostly apparitions of those who look to be dead and some have even seen full scenes of people being brutally tortured. Dread, despair, depression. These are all commonly reported feelings from visitors of this castle. Certainly not a spot that I recommend going if you do find yourself in Romania. Number five on this list is Mary King's Close. Mary King's Close is known to most as being Scotland's most haunted street. It's a very dark and mysterious looking street. I'm not sure if we have any Harry Potter fans watching, but it reminds me of the dark part of Diagon Alley. Just really strong and creepy vibes. It leads off of Edinburgh's Royal Mile, which is the road coming from Edinburgh Castle. This close was apparently gated off in the past during an outbreak of the plague and was left like this for a long time. Only pretty recently has it been reopened. But ever since it has, the reports of hauntings have run rampant. The most commonly spotted spirit here is that of a young girl. Nobody knows her name or why she's there, but she'll often appear holding a little plush bunny rabbit and run through the clothes. She's said to be devilishly tricky as well and will often steal tiny things off of your person as you pass by without even realizing. Phones, wallets, rings, necklaces, tiny things of this nature are often reported being lost or stolen after walking through the clothes. Some people think that when this place got bricked up, she was actually forgotten about in here and then died. I'm not sure how someone could possibly have forgotten a little girl here as they were locking it up, but I suppose anything is possible. Either way, it is deeply haunted now, and if you do go, then make sure you leave all your valuables at home. Number four on this list is Stirling Castle. Stirling Castle is one of the most haunted castles in all of Scotland's history and is located on top of Castle Hill. Great Castles writes, The most famous spirit to call Stirling Castle home is the ghost of the Green Lady. Stirling Castle still serves as the home to a garrison and one evening she delayed dinner in the officer's mess when she materialized behind the chef who was preparing the meal for the soldiers. 
Feeling as though he was being watched, he turned around only to see her green, translucent form standing behind him, at which time he fainted. She simply vanished on this occasion, but her appearances are usually a harbinger of bad things to come. On several occasions, her visits have occurred shortly before fires or other mishaps at the castle. The ghost of a pink lady sometimes can be seen leaving the castle and walking to the neighboring church of the Holy Rood Ladies Rock. This was an elevated location where the ladies of the court would go to watch knights participate in jousting tournaments. Some believe the Pink Lady is the ghost of the sole survivor of Edward I's siege of the castle in 1304. Having escaped the siege, she keeps returning to the castle to find her slain husband, though her spirit is seen leaving the castle, not entering. This article then goes on to talk about a ghost of a man with a kilt who lives around the dungeons of this castle and occasionally shows himself to the visitors. But clearly the spirits of this castle are pretty fond of bright colors. The green lady, the pink lady, I'm kind of surprised that we didn't get a few more ghosts together and we can make a whole freaking rainbow. Even though they are bright and colorful, they are still very scary. In fact, there have been reports of people actually dying of sheer fright before, their corpses looking as if they were petrified to death. It's also believed that if you don't die of fright, then seeing these ghosts is a sign of horrible things to come. Either way, I would recommend avoiding this spot altogether. Scotland has a bunch of other non-haunted castles to visit if you need to get your castle fix in. Number three on this list is the Culloden Moor. The Culloden Moor acted as the site for one of Scotland's most infamous and bloody battles in all of history. Christy McIntyre writes, Many of the ancient battlefields of Scotland are rumored to be plagued by the souls of those who died there. It's not surprising that Culloden, the site one of the most infamous battles in British history, is among them. Over in under an hour, nearly 1,500 Jacobite soldiers were killed and it remains the last battle fought on British soil. But according to some locals, the battle still rages. Gunfire, swords, and crying are said to echo across the empty moor, particularly on the anniversary of the battle. As well as sounds of combat, the figure of a lone Jacobite soldier reportedly roams the battlefield wandering in his clan tartan, muttering defeated over and over again as he goes. He's not the only ghostly visitor to this site. Close to the battlefield is the house that Bonnie Prince Charlie, leader of the Jacobite rebellion, slept in the night before the battle. Although now a hotel, it's said that the prince still lingers there wearing full highland dress, waiting for the battle that will restore him to the throne. Birds are said to never sing or even fly over this area since they can sense the horrible spirits that are still around here. Whenever birds or animals in general want to avoid a certain area, usually it makes me pretty skeptical as well. Animals have a sixth sense about such things and they can feel danger before it's even there. Also, if I'm to avoid any ghosts, then it's always going to be the ones that were slain in battle. These souls have been through hell and are obviously very dangerous. Our soldier could wander around saying defeated, or he could pull out his ghost sword and go to town on you. Not a risk that I am personally willing to take. Number two on this list is Overton Bridge. I'm sorry, but this bridge is clearly haunted is actually the title of an article written by Amanda Arnold on how freaking haunted this bridge actually is. The bridge is located in the small Scottish town of Dumbarton. Most bridges that we talk about on this channel are haunted by the ghosts of those who have passed away here, or some lady in white that longs for her lover here, or something like that. Not this one though. This bridge actually isn't dangerous at all to humans. It is, however, super dangerous to our best friends dogs. Apparently this one little bridge in basically the middle of nowhere has been the host to over 50 dogs taking their own life. Yeah, you heard that properly, a dog taking their own life. In the past 60 years, anywhere from 300 to 600 dogs have thrown themselves over the bridge for no apparent reason and over 50 of them have died from the fall. Think about that statistic for a second. Like, that's actually kind of crazy. Outsiders believe that there has to be some kind of smell or some property around here that attracts the dogs to the water, but locals believe it's something paranormal. Apparently, even though these spirits are not dangerous to humans, we can still sense them, and people around here have sensed these beings before. It also doesn't seem like a smell that bothers these dogs because they go into a deep trance right before they leap off. At first, she froze, McKinnon 
and told the Times, but then she became possessed by a strange energy and ran and jumped right off the parapet. That was a statement from a dog owner who watched as their dog jumped off the bridge. Locals think that the ghost who is causing these doggy disturbances are from the Lady of Overton. She died here many years ago mourning her husband. I suppose this could be the case, but why is she taking out her grief on dogs? Like, come on lady, let's leave the pups out of this. Anyways, this is definitely a haunted spot, and if you do happen to be walking your dog here, then keep it on a leash. Number one on this list is Cawdor Castle. Cawdor Castle is definitely one of the most haunted castles in Europe. It is quite a name for itself because it has a strong connection to one of the most successful stories ever written, Macbeth. This also adds to the lore of this castle's haunting because Macbeth, or the Scottish play, has its own history of haunting surrounding it. Even though this castle is deeply tied in with that story, its haunting doesn't share any connection to the one that plagues Macbeth. This one is centered around the ghost of a woman named Muriel Calder. Muriel Calder was the daughter of the Earl of Calder who was in charge of the castle in the 18th century. Her ghost is seen at this castle all the time with most of the sightings taking place in the tallest tower here. There are two stories of origin for how she managed to come about and no one is 100% sure which is the correct one. The first story talks about how she fell in love with someone from a rival clan. A real Romeo and Juliet story where she was deeply in love with someone that she wasn't allowed to see. She would sneak out to see this boy but eventually her father caught her and punished her for her actions. After learning of her treachery, his rage knew no bounds and he beat his daughter. She got away though and ran to the top of the tower, locking the door behind her. Her father wasn't deterred though and broke through, drawing his sword in the process. She tried climbing out the window to safety, but her dad, with one big swing, cut both of her hands off and she fell to her death. The second story doesn't include the dramatic chase up to the tower, but says that he just cut her hands off as punishment so that she could never hold her lover again. Obviously though, with both of her hands sliced off, she couldn't really do much of anything and died from blood loss soon after. Either way, her ghost is now forever restless in this castle and makes itself regularly known to visitors. Obviously, the key identifier of this apparition is her lack of two hands. In at number five, we have Ghost Castle. In the town of Bios in Serbia on the slopes of Frescogora Mountains rest an abandoned building in ruins and long forgotten. Known originally as the Spitzer Castle, it was once one of the most beautiful sights in all of Serbia, with glass gardens, peacocks and deer, somewhere you would only hear about in a fairy tale. It was built in the late 19th century by Edward Eddie Spitzer, who was the co-owner of the Biasin Cement Factory. Spitzer hired the famous architect Imri Stindl, best known for his work on the Hungarian Parliament Building in Budapest. The architectural styles of Spitzer Castle include elements of Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque and Romanesque art. In 1889 the mansion had been finished and the Spitzer family moved into the castle and lived there until World War II, then leaving in 1941 and moving to Germany. After the war the ownership of the castle went to the state and then at various points in time it hosted a school, library, the first Biosyn radio station and a restaurant, but as time went on, the building was slowly deteriorating. It was also used as a film set for many movies, including the 1970 American war film Kelly's Heroes, starring Clint Eastwood. Today, the castle is deserted, surrounded by wires, without door or windows, and crumbling rooftops. The locals had nicknamed the building as the Ghost House due to many people hearing, seeing, and coming into contact with paranormal entities. On more than one account, people hear footsteps and screams coming from one of the bedrooms. This this creepy, decaying building is scary enough, but many dark tourism enthusiasts come here to see if they too can come into contact with any ghosts and haunted beings. There is a theory from the locals that a boy was roaming the home with his friends, but had gone off on his own and never returned. The boy's friends said they heard screams and when they had run over to the area it was coming from nothing. They had searched in and around the building, but the boy was never found and to this day people still hear his screams. This is one place you should never visit because you may never come back. Coming in at number 4 we have Devil's Town. Devolja Veros, which translates to English as Devil's Town, is a very unusual rock formation said to be created by soul erosion. These peculiar rock towers are located between the Devil's Gully and Hell's Gully near the town of Kursomlija in southern Serbia. Located on Mount Radin are more than 200 stone formations, 2 to 15 meters high and up to 3 meters wide, with strange stone caps. This particular place is a huge tourist destination, not only because of its beautiful and unique looking rock towers, but also because of the 
legend surrounding this eerie place. Locals believe that these weird looking rock formations are actually petrified remains of a cursed wedding party. Apparently these poor people drank from a nearby spring which attracted the devil himself who tried to cloud their minds and force a brother and sister into marriage. Once the word got to a local fairy she decided to interfere and turn them all into stone. The locals still insist that the area is haunted by the devil and refuse to spend a night there. If you're brave enough to go to this cursed place, all I have to say is don't overstay your welcome. Devil's Town and their odd looking rock towers continue to be a very rare natural phenomenon and was actually a nominee in the new 7 wonders of nature campaign. Definitely one of the most visited places in Serbia whether it's because it's beauty or it's haunted past, it's unknown its true origins but it's definitely a very creepy place. If you're still willing to travel and see this place maybe just leave before the sun sets just in case. Coming in at number 3 we have the Skull Tower. This stone structure is located in Nis, Serbia and almost 1000 human skulls are embedded in the walls. Constructed by the Ottoman Empire in 1809 following the Battle of Sagar during the first Serbian uprising. During the battle, Serbian rebels under the command of Stephen Sindelik were surrounded by the Ottomans on Siga Hill near Nis. Knowing that he and his fighters would be killed if they were captured, Stephen detonated a powder magazine within the rebel entrenchment, killing not only himself but also his fighters and the Ottoman soldiers. After this massacre, the governor of the Romelia, Ialet, Hushid Pasha, ordered that a tower be made from the skulls of the fallen. The tower is 15 feet high and consisted of 952 skulls embedded on four sides in 14 rows. So many lives were lost at the skull tower, and the history and skulls displayed are proof of that. And many believe that these lost souls still roam the area and is considered to be a very haunted attraction in Siberia. In 1861, Mithat Pasha, the last Ottoman governor of Nis, ordered that the skull tower be dismantled, but that did not happen. It was eventually restored and the chapel was renovated in 1937. In 1948, skull tower and the chapel enclosing it were declared cultural monuments of exceptional importance and came under protection of the Socialist Republic of Serbia, and further renovation of the chapel occurred in 1989. Many Serbians see this display as a symbol of the country's struggle for independence. As of this year, only 58 skulls remain in the tower walls and Cinderlec's skull is said to be featured in an enclosed glass container next to the structure. The skull tower is a very popular tourist attraction visited by 30,000 to 50,000 people annually to see this eerie and creepy display. Coming in at number 2 we have Mount Ratanj. This is a mountain located in eastern Serbia between the towns of Bolijevec and Sokobanja and is one of the highest peaks in Serbia and is another huge phenomenon. Many stories have emerged from onlookers and tourists that go to Ratanj, stories about unusual flying objects which circle around the peak, fiery spheres, aliens and voices in unknown languages have been some of many things people experience here. This mountain is also talked about by many due to its beauty, size and perfect geometrical shape resembling a pyramid. Ratanj actually has the same angle of inclination as the Pyramid of the Mood in Mexico, and same angles as the Pyramid of Cheops, and many believe that this is not coincidence. The mystery surrounding Ratanj is still the reason for many scientists' arguments. Some say the mountain is actually an ancient pyramid, a natural wonder, the work of a higher power of even aliens. Another local legend explains that the castle of a wizard was located on Ratanj Mountain, where he held his treasure, but the castle had eventually disappeared within the mountain, trapping the wealthy sorcerer inside with his treasures, making this a very popular location for treasure hunters in search for lost gold and gems. So many questions loom over Mount Ratanj and has created a whirlwind of theories and tourists to come and try and experience the many things rumoured to happen here. Others come to Ratanj for the rare healing herbs that grow on the mountains and it emits a type of energy which is beneficial to human health, but this is only a rumour. Everyone who has visited this mountain say they experience a mysterious energy. We may never know if this is positive or negative. And finally in at number 1 we have Sava Savanovic's Mill. This is one of the most well known places in Serbia for its ghost stories. This mill is located in the hill of the small village of Saroj in the west central part of Serbia, 3 hours away from the town of Belgrade. The story is that Sava Savanovic was a vampire and the first ever vampire that resided at this mill. According to one story Sava was a wealthy cattle trader and he had fallen in love with a much younger girl who he had proposed to but she had rejected him. Blind Blinded by anger and jealousy, he decided to kill the girl. After the locals of 
Saroj found out, they beat Sava to death and buried him outside the local cemetery. But actually, Sava had risen and became a vampire and began drowning everyone who would come to grind grain in his mill. For years, the locals of Saroj lived in fear of the murderous vampire until they came together and stabbed him with a hawthorn skate, killing him forever. And legend says that a butterfly escaped from Sava's grave, which meant that Sava is still visiting the mill to this day. The citizens of the village tell many stories about the horror they have faced from this creature, and it's the most known horror story throughout all of Serbia. And in 1880, one of the most famous Serbian authors, Milovan Glisic, wrote the book 90 Year Later, rooting from the story of this famous vampire, and was in fact published 17 years before Bram Stoker's Dracula. And then in 1973, all of the stories of the vampire were turned into Serbia's first horror film, Butterfly. The old Sava mill was left abandoned for a long time until it was renovated by the local owner of the village, Cafeteria, and after all of these stories swirling, Sava has become a local legend, and tourists come from near and far to visit this mill. Many still believe that Sava to this day still haunts the mill, and it's considered one of the most haunted places in all of Serbia. At lucky number 5 is Joliet Correctional Center. The Joliet Correctional Center, established in Joliet, Illinois in 1858, holds a storied past that is as captivating as it is haunting. This historic penitentiary served as a house of horrors for over 150 years, housing some of the state's most notorious criminals. Within its imposing stone walls lie a rich history of many eerie and disturbing tales. But the most chilling of these tales is that of the murder of the warden's wife in 1915. Odette Allen, better known simply as the warden's wife, was an aspiring singer before marrying her husband, Warden Ned Allen. The marriage would have her move from her home in Los Angeles to living in the Joliet Correctional Center with her betrothed. Odette was incredibly popular among the inmates. She was known to be a kind and compassionate woman who tried to make the lives of the prisoners a little more bearable by offering them small acts of kindness, such as providing treats or lending a listening ear to their troubles. The inmates would call her things like the good angel and the little mother at the big stir out of admiration for her benevolence. The inmates would often act as servants to her and the warden as an alternative to hard prison labor. In June of 1915, the warden went to Chicago to meet with politicians about the building of a new prison. Adette didn't join her husband because the dresses she wanted to wear weren't yet ready. One morning, Adette asked for the help of Joe Campbell, also known as Chicken Joe, a prisoner who had been convicted of murder at the age of 29. He was selected to be Adette's personal servant because of his great behavior and his healthy relationship with her and the warden. He was due for parole the next week, and Adette was going to testify for him at his hearing. Sounds like life was looking up for Chicken Joe, but what happened next would tragically bring all these good things to ruin for the young prisoner. The morning of her death, Adette asked Joe to refill her water bottle, go grab her coffee and a newspaper and to walk her dog. To this, Joe obliged. But then, an hour later, he would return to the house with smoke coming from Odette's bedroom window. Firefighters were quick to the scene, but were not fast enough, as once they extinguished the flames, Odette's charred body was already laying still on the bed. Upon investigation, they discovered that Odette was SA'd and killed before the bed was set on fire, and suspicions immediately turned to Chicken Joe. Joe was the subject of much scrutiny from police, Illinois citizens, and even fellow prisoners. Even after adamantly pleading innocence, Joe was sentenced to death by the court, but his sentence was changed to life in prison at the last second by a sympathetic governor who believed his story. After the tragedy, strange things started happening in the prison. Many inmates and guards would report seeing or hearing Odette still wandering the halls. There have also been some cases of hearing her singing in the nearby prison cemetery. One night in the 1930s, about 5,000 people went to the cemetery armed in an attempt to vanquish the apparition, but no one could find her anywhere. Amidst the chaos, a dozen people went missing supposed victims of the ghost. Which to me is crazy, like at what point are you so scared of a ghost you need 5,000 people just to get rid of it? And they still didn't even find her. Just give up at that point guys, come on. Anyway, it is said that Odette remains in the prison in order to protect her boys, the prisoners who were inspired by her kindness and honored her after death through their good behavior. Any visitor that would try to disturb her peace would incur the poltergeist's wrath and suddenly disappear. If you were to visit the prison today, which closed in 2002 and was turned into a historical site, there's still a good chance you might come across Adette's ghost, still wandering and singing. Next up at number 4 is the Congress Plaza Hotel. Constructed in 1893 as part of the World's Columbian Exposition, the Congress Plaza Hotel has welcomed countless guests over the years, including prominent figures such as presidents, celebrities, and even infamous gangsters. Its iconic location overlooking Grant Park and Lake Michigan has made it a popular choice for visitors seeking a taste of vintage luxury. But it is the hotel's dark past 
and ghostly residents that have set it truly apart. One of the most well known ghosts said to haunt the hotel is that of a ghostly presence known as the Shadow Man. His story dates back to 1900, when Captain Louis Ostheim, a war veteran haunted by the horrors of the Spanish American War, sought refuge at the hotel on the eve of his wedding. The captain would often experience PTSD induced night terrors and suffer from extreme anxiety and paranoia. The night of his death, he awoke suddenly after being consumed by a brutal episode. In his disoriented state, he would search for solace or an escape from his inner demons. And tragically, he took his own life. Ever since that fateful night, the spirit of Captain Ostheim has been seen walking through the Congress Plaza Hotel, appearing as a shadowy figure gliding through the halls with a haunting aura. Guests and staff have reported encountering the Shadow Man on multiple occasions, his spectral form silently following their footsteps, as if seeking some elusive connection or unfinished business. Those unlucky enough to meet the Shadow Man's gaze would begin feeling greatly distressed and having night terrors of their own, some meeting the same fate as him after the fact. As the years have passed, the legend of the Shadow Man has become deeply ingrained in the history of the Congress Plaza Hotel, adding to its reputation as one of Illinois' most haunted locations. The spirit's enigmatic presence, coupled with the tragic circumstances that led to his lingering existence, makes encounters with the Shadow Man as eerie and thought-provoking as they are dangerous. Do any of you guys see any ghosts while staying in a hotel? Leave a comment, because I feel like these days every hotel on the planet is haunted. Next at number 3 is the Englewood Post Office. H. H. Holmes, no relation to Sherlock was a deceptive figure who gained infamy in the late 19th century as one of America's first documented serial killers. Operating during the time of the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, Holmes constructed a nightmarish building with a name I'm not even allowed to say on YouTube, but for the sake of brevity, I'll call it Death Castle. Officially named the Holmes Castle or the World's Fair Hotel, Death Castle was a three story building located on the corner of 63rd and Wallace Street in the Englewood neighborhood of Chicago. From the outside, it looked the same as any other ordinary commercial building, complete with shops and apartments. However, its true purpose was far more sinister. Inside the castle, Holmes had constructed a labyrinth of secret passages, hidden staircases, and windowless rooms designed for his nefarious deeds. He used his magnetic charm to lure and manipulate unsuspecting victims, often young women, and visitors to the World's Fair into his deadly lair. The castle featured soundproof rooms, gas chambers, trap doors, and a chilling basement equipped with dissection tables and vats of acid. Holmes would typically seduce and swindle his victims before leading them to their deaths. Many were asphyxiated with gas, mutilated, tormented both psychologically and physically, and killed in various gruesome ways. Once they were deceased, Holmes would dispose of their bodies through the building's hidden chutes, transporting them to the basement for disposal. His exact number of victims remains a mystery, but it is believed he may have killed anywhere from 20 to 200 people during his spree. His sinister acts continued undetected for years, aided by his ability to change aliens is frequently, making it difficult for authorities to track him down. Holmes' reign of terror finally came to an end when he was arrested in 1894 for an unrelated insurance fraud scheme. That castle didn't pay for itself, I guess. As investigators delved into his background, they began uncovering evidence for his horrifying crimes. On May 7, 1986, H.H. H. Holmes was executed. Before his death, he confessed to 27 killings, but hinted at a much higher body count. Afterwards, the infamous Death Castle was later destroyed by a mysterious fire, and a post office was built atop the ruins. Within the Englewood Post Office, it is said that you can still hear the many screams of Holmes' victims. And there have been reports of those who dared venture to the basement, which survived the fire, and you can still see Holmes killing one of his 200 victims, a phantom that echoes the terrifying events that occurred over a century ago. Brr, I just got the chills. Next up, at number 2, is a short one. Resurrection Cemetery. Located in Justice, Illinois, the Resurrection Cemetery holds what it is known to be Illinois' most famous ghost, known only as Resurrection Mary. The story goes that Mary was a vibrant and lively dancer who attended the dance hall in the 1930s. One fateful night, she left the hall after an argument with her partner and decided to walk home alone along Archer Avenue. Tragically, Mary was struck and killed by a hit and run driver while walking along the desolate road. Since then, motorists driving along the street will often see Mary's ghost walking along the road wearing a white gown and dancing shoes. In some cases, Mary will appear as a hitchhiker, but by the time the car reaches Resurrection Cemetery, she would suddenly vanish, occasionally taking the driver with her. Remember guys, don't pick up mysterious ghostly women off the side of the road. It's called Stranger Danger and we should all know it by now. Moving on to number one is Manteno State Mental Hospital. Established in Manteno, Illinois in 1930, the Manteno State Mental Hospital initially served as a psychiatric facility for mentally ill and developmentally disabled patients, offering them treatment and care. However, 
Over the years, the hospital's conditions deteriorated, leading to allegations of beatings, neglect, and the mistreatment of its vulnerable inhabitants. These inhumane conditions only worsened as time passed, with tales of neglect, experimentation, and even deaths due to inadequate medical attention began to spread, shrouding the institution and its reputation in darkness and sorrow. The hospital was at its worst when 384 patients and staff came down with typhoid fever in 1939 in an incident referred to as the Manteno Madness. The director of the hospital mistook the affliction to be nothing more than a case of diarrhea, but when patients and staff began dying, panic set in. Patients banging on windows, orderlies going missing, doctors deliberately injuring their patients. Everything that could go wrong, went wrong. Those who died during the Manteno madness would later haunt the abandoned asylum after its closure in 1985. Those who visited the old hospital would report seeing patients and doctors alike scurrying about the abandoned halls, but it was those who ventured into the tunnels beneath the hospital that were in real danger. Paranormal investigators have gone down into the tunnels in hopes of finding the rumored ghosts, but are met with a much more sinister presence. It is said that the malevolent doctors who would mistreat their patients wander the complex of tunnels, hoping to release their rage upon anyone stupid enough to enter their domain. What was once a place that healed was now a place that harmed, enthralling thrill seekers to see the mad doctors for themselves, only to pay an unfortunate price. After the repeated disappearances of ghost hunters, urban explorers, vandals and the like, the building was demolished by Wrecking Ball in 2015 to discourage anyone from entering the haunted grounds. 